and welcome to the 2023 OHSAA Division Three State Track Prelims. You're watching this great event sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts Seamless Spouting. I'm Jennifer Beck, alongside Danny Holbrook, and we are ready for the four by eight girls. This is a final. Absolutely, no better day than today, Jennifer. Beautiful sun, skies, great crowd. You got one less or one more step to the state championship, except for this race. <laughs> That's right. Here they go. The 4x8 is off and going. And here's who we have in lane 1A and B, Rittenham and Ottawa Hills, 2A and B, Worthington Christian and Botkins, 3A and B, Fort Loramie and Seneca East, 4A and B, Norwayne and West Liberty Salem, 5A and B, Wayne Trace and Colonel Crawford, 6A and B, Minster and Liberty Center, 7A and B, Garraway and Kaleida, 8 Woodmore and McDonald, and in lane nine, A and B, Mogador and Fort Recovery. Jennifer, when they say down here at the state meet is the best of the best, they absolutely mean that. You look at this star-studded field. Mm -hmm. You've got Wayne Trace, the regional champs in Fostoria. You got Minter, the defending state champions. You've got second place finishers of the regionals. This is the best of the best the state of Ohio has to offer. It absolutely is. Ladies are making their way around. Almost their first lap is done and they can make their way over to that lane one section. As we will try and see who is in the leader zone. There's nothing better when they come around to the home crowd and they face that big stadium and everybody goes crazy cheering for their team. That makes it so special here. That was a 106, your leader uh, split right there. Pretty good split for the opening yeah. uh, part of the 4x8. Look, I, I'll say this, and I'll say it a lot today. Sprinters love the heat. Distance uh, people, not so much. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so uh, this is kind of an in-betweener here because they got to sprint those two laps. Reminder who we're watching here, Botkins, Fort Loramie, Wayne Trace, Minster, Liberty Center, Kaleida, and Fort Recovery. And of course, everybody's eyes are always on Minster. They come in with a 929.03. They will be anchoring with last year's state champion, Taylor Roth. You just look for the orange, and that's where you see Minster. Well, and you, you look at Minster, and what they typically do is they bring kids back that have ran in previous years, and that's the key to winning a state title and anything. you got to have junior and seniors who've been here before and you look at some of these teams three out of four returning runners three out of four for liberty center three out of four for kaleida these girls have been in these situations and they know what to do all right folks let's watch the handoffs here as we get ready for the second runners to make their way Here's who we have on the list. Grace Gutman for Botkins, Miley Shadow for Fort Loramie, Bethany Miller for Wayne Trace, Cheney Cedarley for Minster, Christine Minnick for Liberty Center, Lauren Loddick for Kaleida, and Kennedy Millencamp for Fort Recovery. And you look at the lead runner. She's really taken off fast. She's the second leg of this, and you just wonder if she can keep this pace up. She goes around three girls, and now she's got a clear lead, but let's just see how much of that she can keep up around the third curve. Well, what we're seeing right now is that orange jersey making her way behind there on the straightaway. Uh, according to my list, that's Cheney Cedarleaf, who uh, her, her sister actually qualified in the open 800. She qualified, I believe, in the 1600. Um, but a great, uh, no, I'm taking that cameo. I'm getting all my Minster girls messed up here. <laughs> a lot of them qualified in a lot of things, sure. but Cheney, good runner, and we're seeing that right now. Well, no surprise here on this guy's face to see that Minster's up amongst the leaders, so we'll see how they do here. <laughs> it's still a clump, though. Take a look at this Absolutely. leaderboard. This is this is a pretty big clump as these girls make their way in here. But everybody in this field knows that the lead runner is the defending state champion as far as the team goes, so that pressure goes on everybody else, and Minster's in a really good position right now. Just a gorgeous day here. It's supposed to be highs of 92 degrees today, Jennifer. All the athletes will stay loose today. I, 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 the only thing I can see is cramping. They gotta stay hydrated, uh, but everybody's gonna be loose and ready to run. Well, one of the, the interesting things as I've thought back through this season is we have a lot of cold yeah. days. Yeah. And uh, what a change weather-wise for these runners. They've been through a lot of different weather patterns. Uh, nothing like this, yeah. really. <laughs> Coach track for a lot of years, Jennifer. And we always start out getting the kids out on the track. And there's usually snow around the infield. And uh, we're just trying to get out on sunny days, whether it's 30 degrees or 40 degrees. And then you end the season 92 degrees here in the Jesse O. 
All right, I kind of love what's happening right now here. We got contenders for first and second place. That's what you get in the state finals of the four by eight. Um, it's so interesting because every runner in this leg has something different to bring. Uh, we still do not want to forget whose anchor leg for Minster. That is going to be Taylor Roth, your defending 800 state champion from last year. Yeah, and Minster's philosophy is, look, if we can keep it close, we know we have a shot to repeat as the state champions. When you have the best anchor runner in the field, get her the baton and keep it close, and she'll bring it home for you. A couple stats to share with you. Wayne Trace is the number two seed coming in. Minster the top seed coming in. Last year, Fort Loramie finished second in this race with three of four runners returning this year. Liberty Center placed fourth with three or four runners back. Kaleida placed seventh with three of four runners back. So we got some seasoned runners here on this track. Yeah, you, you typically, when you see a freshman or sophomore in these kind of events, you're kind of taken aback. They got to be a special runner to compete at this level. But it's typically juniors and seniors who dominate at the state track meet because they've been here before mm -hmm. and they understand the work that goes into it and what it takes. Look, it's not easy to come in here and run in front of 10,000 people. It's really not. <laughs> and, and, and you know, you've been coming down here for years. This is a special place. It's holy ground it for is, track and field. It is a special place. And we are watching that orange jersey increase the lead here as this runner makes her way around for the second lap. Jennifer, that's a comfortable stride right there. She looks incredibly comfortable and she is stretching that lead out. So top eight teams will make it onto the podium. They get the all Ohio status. And we're starting to see a little more spread here. We are. You're uh, an, an unbelievable you're, you, you job. You are to the point at home where you just get to see one runners because the spread is so big. Yeah, it's a dominant performance right now by the Minster Wildcats. They are stretching that lead out. And you can hear their fans. They know exactly what's going on right now. They're coming around the last curve here, and they'll go to the anchor leg, and we know what she can do. One of the things I love about state track is how much uh, respect the 4x8 gets. Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. let's just be honest, a lot of people don't spend a lot of time watching it. It's a long race, but the excitement is growing, and you can hear the cheering. They're at a, they'll be at a seven-minute pace right now. Their seed time is 9.28. Let's see if they can run that here. Look, I'm, I'm thinking they can go under 9.28 right now in these conditions. They are absolutely destroying the field right now. Here's what we have for our anchor legs for our local runners. From Botkins, it's Brittany Arnold. From Fort Loramie, Colleen Borchers, Wayne Trice, Kiara Bahena, Minster, Taylor Roth, Liberty Center, Gracie Miller, Kaleida, Ali Coleman, and Fort Recovery, Natalie Brunswick. Of course, you can be keeping track of the results on finish timing powered by mile split. And look at Taylor Roth, the defending 800 state champ. She signed a run at Embry Riddle, Aaron Nautical. You know she's got to be smart to go there, Jennifer. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> Daytona Beach, Florida. She's got the best of both worlds. Get to run a little track, get your uh, studies in, and you're on the beach. We got a Minster fan behind us. That's right. I hear go Tay, go Tay. And you know, she is showing her self uh, directive ability because she has run it alone. She's an 808 right she's now, Jennifer. Alone. Yeah, she is running alone. There, now she's competing against herself. There's a race going on for second place. Fort Loramie's right down there in the currently down there, but we still have one more lap left to go. Typically, you see teams like Minster and West Liberty Salem in the same teams down here in the 4 by 8 and they continue that tradition at their schools, and you've seen it today. Well, Danny, just about how much of a lead do you think Minster uh, has she, on everybody else she's right got, now? She's got a football field and a half right now. You can accumulate it by watching at the infield here, and she is absolutely dominating the field right now. Nobody's pushing her, and she's just relaxing right now. She, comes, she knows she's got a state title for her team. And this is the beginning of what we're going to see with Minster. Powerhouse track and cross country, of course. We see it year after year, and I think they're starting the meet off with a statement. Yeah, this is this is huge. A, an incredible performance by the Minster Wildcats, the defending state champs. They'll bring it back to Minster High School. Look at that time, Look Jennifer. Look at that time. Whoa. 
920, wow. Jennifer. That's 920. amazing. That is amazing. That is incredible. Look at this battle for second, third, and fourth. This is what I love about this meet all the way to the end. Your state runner oh. up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was quite at the end. So Minster wins with a 919.85. Second place is Norway with a 938.30. Mogador with third place with a 938.32. And Fort, Fort Laramie gets fourth with a 939.55. And what was interesting about that race, Jennifer, uh, excuse me, Mogador led for the first lap and a half. They got out to a quick start, and Minster quickly erased that. All right, the champs are here back to back. Introduce yourselves to us, ladies. Maria Niekamp, Taylor Roth, Annie Hemmelgarn and Maggie Hemmelgarn. Ladies, back to back, how important is it? How good does it feel right now? <laughs> it feels pretty awesome, just being a freshman, first time here. You had an incredible third leg, got your, your team to lead. Walk us through those emotions when you handed it to, to Roth. Um, I was a little bit nervous because I, I don't know, I was super tired and I knew that she was a little bit nervous beforehand, but <laughs> I ultimately knew that she would make it through. Back to back, guys are going to be immortal. How important has it been to this Mr. Track program? Um, it's been pretty great, especially as a freshman. Coming into such a crazy, fast, cool program, it feels really good to be able to win as a freshman with an amazing team. What's it say about your community with the ton of orange up in the stands as a runner? What does that mean to you? Oh, I love it. I couldn't do it without our community. It's so, it feels so good, especially when you're walking down the track and they're all cheering you on. It really gives you strength. And Taylor, couldn't have got it done without the lucky socks. Tell us a little bit about these lucky socks. So I always was, I always run in Christmas socks. It's kind of been my thing since my freshman year. Um, I've always said it's Christmas morning every morning. I wake up, I'm grateful for my day, and so that really helped me today because I was grateful to come out here and run at Jesse Owens. I know how great of a stadium it is, how great of a track, and how great of a team I have. So I was super grateful this morning, and I definitely think that helped me on my run today. Well, not just Lucky Socks, but you guys have been a gift to the Minster Track Program, to say the least. Uh, ladies, congratulations. Enjoy your time here at the Jesse O. Thank you. Boys, four by 800 meter relay, and we have some great local teams to be watching. Here's who we've got running in lane one, A, Minster, lane and B, Botkins. Lane two, A and B, United and West Liberty Salem. Three, A and B, New Bremen and Elgin. Four, A and B, Cedarville and St. Paul. Five, A and B, Maplewood and McDonald. Six, A and B, Bluffton and Tenora. Seven, A and B, Mount Gilead and Riverdale. Eight, A and B, Fisher Catholic and uh, Bridman. And nine, A and B, Ottawa Hills and Lincoln View. Another star-studded field. You've got the Bluffton Pirates. They're the record holder for the regionals last week at Faustoria. They've got a fantastic team. All four guys ran this race last year. They're all coming back this year. you got to believe they're your favorite. They are all seniors, yes. so they've got a goal. They've got a plan. They've got what they know what they want to do. They fin finished last year third place. Two of these runners are getting ready for collegiate running. Eric Nygaard's heading to University of Charleston and Landon Armstrong at Finley. We're going to be watching those red jerseys. Another guy to watch in this race is Bodkin's number four runner, Carter Pyman, the All-State basketball standout. Just as good on the track and field. He's a fantastic athlete. Let's watch for him and see how he helps his team along the way. Looks like that might be Mogador. Oh, no! Making its way over close to the front as they all make their way into Bodkin's right there in, or I'm sorry, Bluffton. Bluffton right there in third place right now with Eric Nygaard leading off. 3,200 will be his other big race tomorrow that he has been training for. He, he'll be running next year collegiately at the University of Charleston in West Virginia. Beautiful country down there, and he's gonna get down there and compete in the track and field program. Still a pretty close group here. 
Yeah, and you first, second, and third, a little bit of great, but look at the, the closeness of that group. <laughs> look, at the, look at all the athletes all bunched up together. Typically on that first two laps, that's what you're going to see, and you'll get them separated here. Now, this is the state level, Jennifer. When I say separation, there's not a lot of separation amongst the boys in this event. That's right. Uh, Eric Nygaard is going to be handing off to Sam Durstein, who is a pretty good 800 runner. Now, of course, we've got a lot of pretty good 800 runners here in this meet. Here's who we have of our local runners. Minster's oh, handing off to Will Kanapke. Watkins, Carson Brown, Sam Bernhold for New Bremen, Sam Durstein for Bluffton, Paul Westrick for Tenora, Luke Donaldson for Riverdale, and Evan Johns for Lincoln View. And, and interesting, Jennifer, what just happened at the, uh, the, the the line there, you had a lot of guys going down, and there was a lot of batons being handed off, and there was a lot of interference. I don't know what they're going to rule on that, but that's interesting to keep in the back of your minds and see if anybody gets disqualified because of those discrepancies. Well, and it's, it's notable for you to bring that up because uh, last week in Division Two uh, with with a, a regional, we had a situation in the four by four where Ottawa Glendorf actually finished second, but the first place team got disqualified for 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 the same thing for yeah. interference. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And it happens. It, and look, it's nobody's fault, and nobody's intentionally trying to do it. When you get them bunched up like that, you've really got to be conscious about where you're at on the track. So I'm watching Bluffton now, and it looks like they changed their lineup because I think that's actually my be Eric Nygaard running now. Okay. We have him listed as first, but of course it's pretty common for, sure, you can change for, for, yep. for coaches to change things up and move things around. Well, they are in the fourth position right now. Well, fourth, fifth, if you want to call it that. Uh, sitting pretty right now, not, uh, not panicking and not getting too far out of the leaderboard. Still have quite a bit of this race to go. Sure, that's the thing sure. you remember. Yeah. Four bay eight is long. And uh, a lot can happen. Yeah, you see a lot. Of, look, handoffs are huge in the sprinting relays. Not so much in the distance, but they're still important when you've got 17, 18 guys out mm -hmm. there. You've got to be conscious of where you are on the track. Okay, as you're watching these guys make their way around, I'll give you some results from the girls, four by eight. Again, this is a final. Uh, Minster won, as you know, with a 919.85. Fort Loramie finished in fourth place. Botkins in sixth. Liberty Center in seventh. Um, Fort Recovery Let's finished go, in 13th. Kaleida, 14th. Wayne Trace, 17th. Let's go, Rising! So still, still really oh, bunched up oh, right now. Another, a, another drop, yeah, up another a drop, drop. baton. If, did he go out of the lane? Did he disrupt and see into somebody else? We'll have to wait and see what the judges say about that. It looked like the baton stayed in his lane, and he picked it up, and he'll be okay. All right, I think that's Eden Antrum, who's now running for Bluffton, and you see he has moved his way into the fourth place, kicking some sprinter, uh, sprinter kicks there as he made his way around yeah, the first 200. You watch his running form right now. He keeps those arms high and tight. He never crosses his breastbone. They're straight up and down. His knees are coming up. He's really looking strong right now as he's going around. Now, I wouldn't recommend running on a, on a curve like that, but a lot of kids do that. Uh, I just don't like it. <laughs> well, I wonder if these guys talked about it and right, looked right. at who their, their, their lineup was going to be and right. said, okay, this is when our move's going to happen. Sure. And they went into it with, with this plan. Bluffton has now moved their way into third place, but Tenora sneaking up yeah. into that fourth place spot. Tenora on the outside, go, expending a lot of energy. You wonder if he can keep that Let's up. Go, Let's see how this goes. And you're looking at the leader right now out top, and he's getting a little bit of spread between him and second and third. But here comes Bluffton on the outside, trying to get that second position. Landon Armstrong is going to be your anchor for Bluffton, according to our paper that we have right here. The other anchors locally for Minster, Jack Grisha, Botkins, Carter Plyman, New Bremen, Patrick Bernhold. Again, Armstrong for Bluffton, Tenoris, Jackson Durfee, Ethan Warren for Riverdale, and Connor Baldock will be anchoring for Lincoln. Well, right now, Landon Armstrong's coming up, and he looks so comfortable, Jennifer. He's going to take the lead here, whether he does it on the curve or the straightaway. The first place runner right now is losing everything. Here comes Armstrong on the outside. We're now seeing him basically do what coaches say to never do. Right, right. He's, he's, he's <laughs> passing on the curve. He's done it on both of the laps, but it's working. It didn't slow him down at all. <laughs> you know, you expend a lot of energy on the curves, and you like your guys to go on the straightaways, and it didn't affect him at all. All right, folks, here it comes, the final lap and Bluffton is currently your leader. And they are looking strong right now. This is going to be a fantastic last two races. All the way through, brother. All the way. 
Yeah, well, it, well, go ahead. Yeah, wouldn't it be something for Lima Land, the first two races of the day, state championships for local teams? Absolutely. We saw the Minster girls just blaze their way around in the 4x8, and now we've got Bluffton here in the leader spot, first place. These guys from the start of the season looked at this race and said, this is what Absolutely. we want to do. Absolutely. All four of them did this last year. They know what it took to get back here. Nothing but a state championship is going to satisfy these guys, and right now they're in the prime position to take it home. And they're not just looking at this race. This team is looking at this. Oh, absolutely. Team meet. titles, absolutely. We've got some. We're going to hear. You're going to hear the Bluffton name a lot in the well, next two days. Look, you, if, if Bluffton wins this right now, you're 10 points up on, on a lot of teams. Typically, 40, 45, 50 points is going to win the state title. All right, there we go. We are half a lap away, and Bluffton still has the lead, increasing the yeah, lead they, as we speak. They look tremendous Let's right now. Play! And it's a race for second place. Unless something happens on the backside, Bluffton's looking really strong right now. You are watching, just a reminder, the D3 state track prelims, but this is a final. There's just a couple finals on day one, sure. and this is one of them. Ultimate Outdoor is our sponsor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X Ultimate Outdoor Division of Alts Seamless Spouting. Well, they're at a 7.30 clip right now, Jennifer. It's going to be interesting to see where Bluffton finishes this race. 7.48.39 is the Division Three record. Well, the it's 740 now. I don't think they're going to get it, but it's going to be close. Take a look at the Bluffton runner as he makes his way. The team on the side is getting ready to cheer. And the Bluffton Pirates just did what they've been planning to do from the start. State champions in the 4x8. I love it when a plan comes together, Jennifer, and the Bluffton Pirates showed you why they are the best 4x8 team in the state of Ohio in Division Three. Bluffton, time of 752.13. Ottawa Hills in second place. Tenora, third place with eight minutes, .53. Maplewood finishing in fourth place. McDonald fifth. United sixth. And I was going to tell you seventh, but our our board, board changed, yeah. but we do know this. Bluffton is your state champion. And really, Jennifer, after the first two laps, it really wasn't a close race. Bluffton showed you their domination. Four seniors, four guys who have been here before, four guys who had a plan, and four guys who are now state champions. All right, we are off to a fabulous start in a beautiful day at the Jesse O Stadium. Don't go away, because when we return, it will be time for the girls' 100-meter hurdles. All right, state champs here. I'm going to have you guys introduce yourselves. Sam Durstein. Eric Nygaard. Eden Antrim. Landon Armstrong. Uh, Sam, you got off to a good start. What was the game plan for you for today? Yeah, I was just hoping to, to hold on to the third or fourth place coming in. I knew there's going to be some fast guys, and I just wanted to trust in my training and hold that position. And I did well. I think I PR'd by a, a second almost. So it was a good start for me. You guys took about five seconds off the school record. Uh, you always say you peak at the right time. Do you feel like you guys peaked? Yeah, no, I think our coaches uh, put us in the right position this year to uh, run our fastest, and all the hard work paid off, um, and I'm just I'm thankful for that, yeah. Coming down to the end, you know, you guys knew you had a shot to win it. Yeah. Uh, walk me through those emotions when the, the baton was handed to you. Um, well, you know, I got it, uh, like, fourth place, I think, um, and I knew that third leg, you know, it's maybe a little bit slower. Um, so, you know, at regionals, um, I handed off in second behind Ottawa Hills, um, so I was going to try to give it to him as close or in front of um, the Ottawa Hills team, because um, I knew if he was anywhere close, he, he'd probably have a chance knowing Landon. So, yeah. As a, a group of seniors, a little bit bittersweet, uh, knowing that this kind of winding down for you guys. Um, I definitely say mostly sweet. I mean, we're all we've all been together through these uh, three years because of COVID. Um, I think we're all we're all just great together, and it's. It's nice to see it end like this. Um, it's be a little sad moving on, but I'm sure we'll see each other in college. I think most of, all of us are going to compete in college, so hopefully we'll all see each other sometime in the future and hopefully uh, get to race each other and maybe uh, be on the opposite side. So we'll see how that goes. Well, you guys are stars now. That's why you have all have the sunglasses on, right? Uh, congratulations the rest of the weekend. Uh, good luck to you guys. Thanks a lot.
Welcome back to the OHSAA Division Three State Track Prelims. You're watching this event sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. We are watching the girls' 100 uh, meter hurdles in lane one, Anna Gasser, Margareta. Lane two, Liv Lindemann of Delphus Jefferson. Lane three, Lexi Plot of Carey. Lane four, Shelby Grover of Lucas. Lane five, Ava Hulet of Mineral Ridge. Lane six, Macy Miller of Fairbanks. Lane seven, Carly Clifford of Rootstown. Eight, Emma Benner of Tuscarawas Valley. And nine, Kayla Eaton of Triad. Jennifer Liv Lindemann looks tremendous right now. She's got a lead and she is really looking comfortable. She's going to cruise on into the finals. Liv Lindemann, your top runner in heat one. A reminder, the top two of each heat plus the next best five times will make it into the finals. 14.59 is her time. And she is your winner of heat one. Let me tell you what that does. When you run that prelim and you finish in the top four in your heat, you go back to wherever you go back to and you realize, I can run with these guys. I can do this. And you know that tomorrow is a chance to win a state title. It's huge for your morale. All right, we're now getting ready for heat two of the girls' 100-meter hurdles. We just saw Liv Lindemann win heat one. Here's who we're watching locally in lane four, CeCe Worsham of Temple Christian, lane seven, Kaylee Dockery of Ayersville, eight, Grace Muller of Marion Local, and nine, Ariel Heitkamp of Fort Loramie. Guess I should have given you the entire rundown. Alyssa Goble for Columbia had won. Gracelyn Lamaru. Marex, Lamar Lamaru, Lamaru, you got it. South Central in two, Corey Vermilia of Lodenville in three, and then Worship in Worshipman four, Azura Travis of Woodmere in five, and Aurora Schubert of Dayton Christian in six. I mentioned the others, but let's go back to Cece Worsham. Tough situation that happened to her sure. just this past Sunday, heading to graduation. She was in a car accident. She's running today with stitches in her hand, a swollen eye, and she cannot see to her right to the right yeah and she did not get to go to graduation correct? right yeah right so you talk about adversity and this is what this championship is all about is overcoming obstacles and cc worship is the perfect example of that she's got a great start really jennifer does. look at this oh, she's wow. out in front look at her go i actually can see the the, the darkness on her eye oh my Oh, she stumbled there at the line, but she's going to qualify for the state championship. Look she's at in. That. She's absolutely in with that finish right there. Cece Worsham from Temple Christian with the second place finish here in the prelims. She will make her way to tomorrow. 14.71 is her time. A reminder, top two times from each heat in the next five. Make it in. Those are blazing times. That's just unreal. And, and look, I'm telling you, sprinters love this kind of weather. They, they can stay loose, and they just run so much better in this heat. All right, uh, joining now with us is CeCe Worsham. Uh, CeCe just came off the track, uh, ran to 100, he qualified into hurdles. Um, a little bit of adversity this past weekend. Tell us a little bit what happened. Um, on Sunday, on the way to my graduation, I got in a car accident, and I had a cuff in my hand, and airbag hit off, and I basically, I think I hit myself in the face, but I had to get like 10 stitches in my eye and a couple in my thumb. But yeah, I'm really just glad to be here in general. <laughs> What's that say about your mental toughness, able to come out here after a car accident and compete? Yeah, um, I wasn't feeling too good about it in the beginning of the week, but I have so much support from my, all my family and my coaches, and they just kept pushing into my head, like, you can do it. You're, you're tough, like, you know you can. And it really helped a lot. Yeah. Did it bother you or did adrenaline take over? Like today, today it didn't really bother me. I mean, I've healed super fast, way faster than I thought I would. We were mostly worried about my eye even being open to be able to see. And it's like pretty decently open, so it really wasn't too bad today. Uh, being the only athlete from Temple Christian, uh, how, do, how does that make you feel that you're able to compete you're going through the adversity of a car accident to get here? I mean, it's awesome I get to like rep my school here and just, I mean, but it's not me. All glory to God, I wouldn't be able to be here without him. Uh, well said. CC Worsham, good luck to you tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> now back to you guys. Event number four, the boys won 10 meter hurdles. Again, this is a prelim. And heat one, lane one, Jeremy Reber of Wayndale. Lane two, Nathan Booth of Shadyside. Lane three, Michael Bologna of Lowellville. Lane four, Colton Reese of Versailles. Lane five, Carter Herman of Edgerton. Lane six, Alex Underwood of Georgetown. Lane seven, Kellen Schlagbaum of Ottoville. Lane eight, Cole Miller of Paint Valley. And lane nine, Justin Finkbein of Tri-Village. 
This is an interesting race, Jennifer. Typically, you watch kids all year long, and, and there's, you know, they'll start the season out, and you got to get those steps down. You got to three-step everything, and, and typically kids get to down. You get down to this level, and then you start thinking about things, mm -hmm. and then your competition. And what happens is the guy beside you may be a little quicker, you may be behind. You've got to stay with what got you here. That's so important. Continue three-stepping. Continue your race. Don't worry about anybody else but you. You just have to qualify today. That's the most important thing. We have all juniors and seniors in this heat. In fact, we've got all juniors and seniors in this entire race. So I can't tell you right now how many of them have been here before, but they do have a little bit more maturity I, I on them. I was going to say, I told you, upperclassmen dominate this level here. They absolutely do. You look at Colton Reese from Versailles, 14-7 in this, Jennifer. He's got the number one seed coming into this. He's in lane four. In the next, in the next team, excuse me. You were right. Colton Reese is in this yeah, seat. He is, he, in this he is right there from Versailles in lane four. Lane this. six, Alex Underwood's looking ahead. That was really tight. Every one of them right up against each other. That's going to be a tough one to sort out. Underwood from Georgetown gets the top spot. Reese from Versailles, the second spot, so he is an automatic qualifier to go into tomorrow. Top two make it automatically tomorrow in the next five best times. And that almost looked like Reese understood what he had to do. It didn't look like he pushed it real hard. He didn't get a great start, but he knew what he had to do to qualify, and he does that. He'll be on to the finals. He'll still have a great shot at winning the state title. Heat two of two. In lane one, Peter Vance of Macomb. Lane two, Chaz Miller of Dixie. Lane three, Zach Reynolds of Columbus Grove. Lane four, Dylan Booth of Shadyside. Lane five, David Blackmon of LeBray. Lane six, Mason Socor of Bel Air. Lane seven, Brennan Betts of East Canton. Lane eight, Logan Phillips of West Liberty. And lane nine, Zaire Hill of Mooney. Yeah, you take a look at the uh, Division Three record we were talking off the air, Jennifer. Chad Zallow, who I saw down here back in 2014 and 2015, mm. who may be one of the greatest Ohio high school track and field athletes of all time. He has the Division Three record at 13.62. The stadium record is 13.4 by the great Ted Ginn <laughs> from Cleveland Glenville, the Ohio State University, and of course, of NFL stardom. So some great athletes have ran this race. Great athletes right here as well, making their way over the second hurdle now. We are watching lanes one and three. Those are our local runners. See David Blackman from La Brea out front. He's going to win this one, but boy, everybody up close on that. Let's see how our local uh, racers fared as we watch for the results to come through here on the board. Blackman is the first spot right there. Now, heard some cheering over here from the people next to us. Bel Air second. Uh, looks like our runners are going to have to wait for that large bids. Yeah. Uh, but that wraps it up for the prelims of the 110 meter hurdles. We'll be back with more track right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to the Division Three State Track D3 prelims from the Jesse O Stadium at The Ohio State University. Time for event five, the girls' 100-meter dash in heat one, lane one, Audra Myers of Riverdale, lane two, Nigel Robinson of Finneytown, three, Kinley Green, Fairbanks, lane four, Leah Smith of Calvert, five, Brianna Shenevi of Dalton, lane six, Izzy Zahn of Coldwater. She's had a great season so far this year. Lane seven, Melinda Brown of McDonald, lane eight, Cameron Prater of Patriot Prep, lane nine, Cece Worship of Temple Christian is back after making her way into the finals in the hurdles despite the fact that she got in a car accident on Sunday that was not her fault. Lane, that's it. Can I say another lane? There is no say, more lanes. You can give, no give lanes. another lane, but there's nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> Leah Smith from Tiffin Calvert, your favorite with a sizzling 12-1 prelims or uh, seed time here. And this is a reminder, it's top two that are going to make it into the finals automatically. And that's going to be Hayden's four and five. <laughs> Leah Smith of Calvert and Brianna Chenevni of Dalton. I got the feeling in that race that Leah Smith from Tiffin Calvert just kind of did what mm. she had to do. She was in second place the entire race. They get to the line and she realizes, you know what? I want to win this one too. She and dropped just takes time, it. though. Yes, yeah, she, she did. She did. She dropped time and did what she had to do. 
So those are your top two finishers. You can go to Mile Split if you want to see who has made it to the finals. Izzy Zahn of Coldwater, 12.26. That's going to get her in. That'll yeah, absolutely. It. Absolutely, that's going to get her in. So we got local flavor in the finals. Time now for heat two of two in the girls' 100-meter dash prelims. In lane one, Ross Kiera of St. Thomas Aquinas. Lane two, Peyton Johnson of Peebles. Three, Anaya Charlton of Trinity. Four, Madison McDaniel of Dawson Bryan. In lane five, Alex Kessel of Dolphus St. John's. Lane six, Addison Swearingen of Fairlawn. Seven, Allison Hamburg of Coldwater. Eight, Maddie Barrett of Legacy Christian. And nine, Kylie Williams of Minster. So we've got five people that we're watching, five, six, seven, and nine here in this heat. Yeah, well, I've got to, the, the privilege of calling several track meets this year with Alex Kesson from Delphi St. John's. Fantastic runner. Jennifer, she finished 11th in this event last year. She's really, really good at her starts. If she gets a good start today, she can get into the finals. And we've talked before about how important those oh. starts are. Not only the starts, but the head position, everything that you do to get out of the blocks. Well, at this level, it becomes magnified because the competition is so good. And when you're a tenth of a second, if you're raising up too quick, if you're not airplaning out is what I call it, when you're going at a, at a, at a different angle, if you're popping straight up, you're done. You're, you're, they've already got a step on you. So you watch that start and watch how important it is. She got a pretty good start, Jennifer. She's in the middle of that track. She is looking pretty good there. Alex Kesson, lane five. Oh, what a run for Alex Kesson from Delta St. John's. John finished last year 11th in this, and she is going to go through, waiting to see it officially on the board. Those, yeah. But it looked to me like she is your heat champion. Moving now to the boys' 100-meter dash. Heat one, lane one, Braxton Althauser from McComb. He is our local runner that we're watching in this race. Also running lane two, Addison Rumeyer of Ash to Ashland Crestview. Lane three, Joseph Chandler of Toledo Emanuel. Four, Cole Miller of Paint Valley. Five, Aiden Jones of Brookfield. Six, Colton Bishop of Twin Valley. Seven, Christian Davis of Brookfield. Eight, Braden Austin, Summit Country Day. And nine, Caden Allen Limith. Watch for Cole Miller from uh, Paint Valley, a sizzling 10.8, which is good, but the all-time track record is 10.2. <laughs> and it looks like we don't have a runner in lane eight. Yeah. Or lane, lane seven. seven. Lane, lane you seven. are correct, Jennifer. So that's yeah. Christian Davis of Brookfield. Uh, certainly hope everything is okay with him. Althauser got a really good start from McComb. He's on the outside. Look <laughs> at Cole Miller. He is Those looking pretty good strides. there. Look at that. Yes. What a great race. And I don't know if Aiden Jones from Brookfield came up and got him at the end. Cole Miller had the lead, but you're right. Braxton Althauser ran a great. He got a really good start, and he ran a really consistent race. Top two make it on automatically. The next five best times make it in. Your top time is Paint Valley's Miller. 10 eight. Oh, a tie. Jones and Miller. Oh, my 10, goodness. 10-8-9. Nine. Nine. Yeah. And I think did my... McComb and we're looking for Althauser. In the top like he four. may have gotten sixth. Peak two in the boys' 100-meter dash. In lane one, Evan Hudson of Oberlin. Lane two, Jacob Hirschberger of Allen East. Lane three, Matt Wisniewski of Independence. Lane four, Justin Richards of Anna. Five, Hayden Heigl of Lipstick. Six, Gabe Okong of Tree of Life. Seven, Ramonte Coleman of Northwood and eight, Kaylin Butler of Mechanicsburg. We've got Justin Richards from Anna who placed seventh in the state last year. Jacob Hirschberger was not here last year because he wasn't running track. No, but I'm telling you, here to tell you, I watched him all fall in football That's season, right, watched yes. him in basketball season. This kid is the ultimate competitor. He doesn't have the fastest time, but I promise you this, they will know he was in this race because he is a competitor. And, and the good folks at Ohio Northern are going to get him to play football next year. He's a quarterback, fantastic athlete. They got to be so excited about that. Got another football player here as well, Hayden Heigl from Lipstick. He's an honorable mention All Ohio football player. Jacob Hersberger, first team All Ohio, also All NDBC baseball player this <laughs> spring. A while he track. was doing this, <laughs> and he's qualified for state in four events. That's amazing. That's amazing. And look, show me a good football program. I'll show you a good track and field program. They go hand in hand. So I thought they were.
they're about ready to go. Uh, but it appears that there is something yet to get these guys into the blocks. Covered Hayden Igo at the PCL Championships. He was dominant that day on the track over at Audeville, and he did a great job. He's got extremely good starts. He'll get up, and he's got a great rhythm to his arms, and he really brings those legs up high. He's an extremely good runner. Justin Richards and Anna in lane four getting out. Look at that stride. Oh, look at him go. He really gets on Hershberger on the left side of him. And I believe Hershberger's going to qualify. Justin Richards with a great run. He's automatically in. But I think Hershberger with that run is going to get into the finals. Yeah, Richards 10-8. Now it looks like Hershberger got fourth, fourth. with 10-9-9. 10-9 nine, should get him in. And Lipsick tied him finishes in sixth in this heat. We're moving now to the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay. These are the prelims. This is heat one, lane one, Anna. Lane two, Liberty Center. Lane three, Fort Loramie. Lane four, Calvert. Lane five, Colonel Crawford. Lane six, Norway. Lane seven, Worthington Christian. Lane eight, McDonald. And lane nine, Montpelier. Tiffin Calvert is the defending state champion, and, and you look at their roster this year, Jennifer, and they've got Leah Smith, who just qualified for the 100, and with a sizzling time, she's gonna be running the anchor leg for this. A lot of strategy goes into this race, putting girls up high in the box, back in the box. Who do you want to run the long distance? Who do you want to run the shorter? A lot of strategy in this race. It's not always the fastest team, it's the team that gets the baton around the fastest. Well, I remember you talking in previous meets that we've done about how there's even strategy in the, the, the transition box. Oh, absolutely. Where you place your runners and who's good. So some of these runners actually run just a little more. Absolutely, than, more than 200, than 200, absolutely. You want to get your strong runners out there and get them in space. Lane one in Anna has Ava Reed. Lane two, Liberty Center has Callie Stoner. And lane three, Fort Renormi, leading off with Ariel Heitkamp. Everybody bunched up right now. You can't really see who your leaderboard is until you get to that first handoff and you watch them stagger a little bit and then they'll separate coming down the home stretch here. Still staggered, so yeah. it isn't necessarily no, no, easy to tell. Right, not necessarily who's in charge right now. We'll find out here on this third handoff. who's got that first handoff. Looks to me Looks like, like lane five. Lane five, that's Colonel yeah. Crawford. Lane five and lane four, right? Battling back and forth. That's Calvert and Colonel Crawford. For our local runners, Anna is anchoring with Brooke Metzler, according to our paper. Sometimes sure. they do change that. Ellie Moeller for Liberty Center is the anchor, and Sonny Voissard of Fort Loramie, a name we've heard many times, is the anchor for in lane three. Yeah, you see Tiffin Calvert on the inside. They're in a really good position. They get the first handoff. Tiffin Calvert, defending state champion, is in the lead right now. They come around the inside of the track. And that runner is moving. Wow, look at her. <laughs> look at her kick. That is Leah Smith, according to our papers, as you said. But that's Leah Smith on the anchor. But look on the inside. What a run here. Liberty Center. Allie Moeller bringing her team in. They're going to finish in second place for an automatic trip <laughs> to the finals tomorrow. <laughs> 1.44 was the time for Calvert, and their seat time was 1.44.12, so they're running right on par. Liberty Center was second with a 144.45. Calvert and Liberty Center, the top two, moving on to the finals tomorrow. Liberty Center did a great job of uh, closing the gap there. Heat two of two, the girls four by 200 meter relay. Lane one, Grandview Heights. Lane two, Seven Hills. Lane three, Tuscarawas Valley. Lane four, North New Middletown, Springfield. Lane five, Minster. Lane six, Margareta. Lane seven, Mooney. Lane eight, Coldwater. And lane nine, Carey. Local teams, Coldwater and Minster. You look at uh, Minster, they were your regional champs this year at Troy. Last year they finished 10th, one spot ahead of Coldwater, who finished 11th. So we had, we had 
everybody in their lanes. They were brought back up. They were just kind of messing around with the PA system a little while ago. Yeah, nothing worse than being out on the track and getting in, into your position and, and, and just getting psyched up and they call you out of the blocks and just uh, nerve wracking. And as far as weather goes, it's 1040 in the morning as we are broadcasting this and it's 83 degrees already. With the humidity, and you can see the humidity. Hotter, <laughs> yeah. hotter down there on that track. Oh my goodness, it is. We are watching lanes five and lanes eight. Those are our local teams. Minster in five with Kylie Williams and Coldwater in eight with Becca winning. Watch that first handoff and gives us an idea of where our runners are since they're still in that stagger. Springfield in lane four with a 145 time. Watch them in the fast lane there at four. Right here, Talisha, go! And look at Carrie, they're getting a great start out front here. Coldwater just about to make up that stagger though. You probably can't see that right now on your spot of the camera. Um, Lanes four and five, of course, they were the ones coming in with the top time. We'll see who gets the first handoff here. It looks like it's going to be lane lane two and lane six gets quick handoffs here. That's seven hills and two, and Margareta in six. So seven hills gets a early lead here on the back side of the track and look really comfortable. That runner's got really nice form. Not, don't know her. She's not a local runner, so when I say that runner, I'm not uh, disparaging her. Anyway, I just don't know her uh, as far as we've not seen her run this year. That's right. Lane five, Minster, Carrie Heckman is who we have listed as the anchor. And in lane eight, Coldwater anchoring with Allison Hamburg. Well, here they come down the back stretch or the front stretch or the home stretch. <laughs> and it is going to be a close one. That looks like Margareta is your leader right now. Minster, Minster close coming the gap. up. <laughs> and so is Coldwater. Check out Coldwater. Oh my oh, goodness, wow. <laughs> the Mac well represented as Minster and Coldwater battled for the second and third position there. So Margareta gets the win in this heat with a 145-38. They will be an automatic qualifier for tomorrow. Waiting to see that second place spot come in on our board here. As we wait. <laughs> that was a... That was a close finish. Coldwater really came up from the back stretch. Yeah, they did a great there. job of closing the gap there. I'm sure that Coldwater and Minster both qualify for that. So Coldwater came through and got wow. that second place spot to move automatically into tomorrow. No, they Actually, tied. Actually, they tied. Coldwater and Minster automatic qualifiers for tomorrow, like you said. We got some great representation for tomorrow's race. Unbelievable, Jennifer. They tied. How many times have they ran against each other this year? <laughs> Okay, now joining us now the qualifiers in the 4x2, the ladies from Liberty Center. Let's introduce ourselves, ladies. Hi, I'm Kelly Stoner. I'm a freshman. I'm Haley Moeller, and I'm a senior. I'm Peyton Army, and I'm a senior. I'm Elle Moeller, and I'm a junior. Now, ladies, uh, I heard you talking amongst yourselves. Uh, Might have broken the school record. Is that true? Yeah, yep. It was by .3, I think. That's awesome. Uh, it feels good to qualify. Um, is it true that you're the fastest uh, lady in the family? No, maybe my personal family, but not out of my cousins. Gotcha. She's definitely faster. <laughs> gotcha. All right, coming down here on the weekend, always good that you get the qualifying done and move on to the final. What do you got to do to get the victory tomorrow? Um, we just got to keep pushing and keep cutting time off and staying up with Calvert, and that should help us a lot. Of course, you had the last leg of it. You had a big lead, grew that lead. How important for it was it when you got the baton that you didn't stumble? Um, well, I knew my teammates put me in a great position, so I just have to finish and just trust in myself, and it'll take care of itself. All right, just qualifying in the 200 to 4x2, the ladies from Coldwater. Ladies, who are you? I'm Izzy Zone, and I'm a sophomore. Uh, Becca Lenning, I'm a junior. Kirsten Keller, I'm a sophomore. I'm Allison Hamburg, and I'm a senior. Uh, let's start with Izzy. Izzy, great job getting your team off to a fast start. Was it tough in this heat? Yeah, I thought it was really hot, so it kind of slowed me down a bit, but I just pushed through, and... Hopefully, make it to finals. I noticed when you guys finish, your eyes go directly to the board to see what your time was. Were you a little bit nervous? Um, yeah, I knew a lot of the teams were right around the same time, so I knew we just have to get the little extra just to make us into the finals, but we got there, so 
Now, moving forward till tomorrow, what's it going to take for you guys, not only for tomorrow, but tonight, to get ready for tomorrow's race? Push yourself and eat healthy, I guess. <laughs> no cheeseburgers, no pizza tonight? No, all pasta. <laughs> and you've been busy so far. All pasta, I like it. You've been busy so far. How tough is it coming off for one event and not getting much time and going right into this? Um, I think people don't really realize how much even like 100 meters can drain you, but especially in this heat, you have to learn how to tune it out and to know what to expect. And yeah, you just get it done, so. Well, if you get it done, you get a big smile like that, right? Congratulations, ladies. Good luck to you tomorrow. As we move now, boys, 4x200 meter relay, I'm going to give you a couple uh, results for as far as qualifiers for tomorrow in the boys 100 meter dash. Justin Richards from Anna, your top time coming in. Jacob Hirschberger of Allen East also making it into tomorrow's final. In the girls' 100-meter dash, Izzy Zahn of Coldwater, Alex Keston of Delft St. John's, and Addison Swearingen of Fairlawn all make it in. In the girls' 100-meter hurdles, Liv Lindemann of Delphus Jefferson, Cece Worsham of Temple Christian, and Grace Muller of Marion Local make it in finals. And in the boys' 110-meter hurdles, Colton Reese of Versailles will be running tomorrow. Boys, four by two, now we have on the track. Heat one, lane one, Calvert. Lane two, Versailles. Lane three, Harden Northern. Lane four, Black River. Lane five, St. Paul. Lane six, Anna. Lane seven, Seneca East. Lane eight, St. Henry. And lane nine, Twin Valley South. A lot of local flavor in this one with Versailles, Harden Northern, Anna, and St. Henry. I'm sure these teams would all know each other and the kids have ran against each other a lot this year. Let's see how this one shakes out. Your defending champion Summit Country Day with a 129.40. Reminder again who we're watching. Versailles in two, leading off of Colton Reese, Harden Northern three with Carter Curtis leadoff, Anna in six, Grant Carity and St. Henry in eight with Ryan Murley. Hard Northern in lane three. They set a school record this year. They've had an outstanding year. The team from Hardin County as they try to get a spot into the finals. Exciting to see them here, really. I, Absolutely. I think that's great. Absolutely. They, they were a staple down here in the 80s and early 90s in great football programs, and they're getting back on track with some really good athletes, so it's great to see them back here. That's pretty cool that you said get back on track. Yeah. You know, Danny, just come up with that? Yeah, yeah, back on track, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm track and field guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's watch this handoff. And, oh, 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 and one oh. went down. That was oh, wow. lane six, That was six, lane I six. That's Anna. I think they actually had the first handoff, but that was quite the reach. Looks like he is okay, as you now are watching. That runner from Anna, Ben McDermott, uh, just blazed his way down that backstretch. And the important thing is he stayed in his lane when he dove. He did a great job of not interfering with anybody. And it looks from my vantage point that Anna had the fastest hand, or the first hand up there in that handing off to Xavier McEldowney. They are looking strong Anna as they make great. their way into this final. Lane six and lane four, your automatic qualifiers. Anna is your top qualifier, Black River actually uh, is the second qualifier, so those are your automatic to head to tomorrow. Heat two of two, boys four by 200 meter relay, lane one, Colonel Crawford, lane two, Dalton, lane three, Nelsonville, York, lane four, Margareta, lane five, Allen East, lane six, Lowellville, lane seven, Ottoville, and lane eight, Campbell, Campbell McMorial, and lane nine, New Middleton, Springfield. Allen East has been, I've really enjoyed watching them uh, this year. Uh, Trey Hensley as an anchor is, He's amazing. He, is he comes in with power. Yeah, he, uh, he was their deep ball threat in football and they sent him long and he would usually get behind the defenders. He's got a lot of speed to burn. Allen East leading off with Jacob Hirschberger. We did an interview with him a couple weeks ago. He said, you know, I just want to get out of the blocks fast. That is my goal <laughs> to just be Fast. Jacob Hershberger, your leadoff for Allen East. Your leadoff for Ottoville is Garrett Trentman. Yeah, Hershberger doing a nice job of getting out of the blocks and getting out there for his team. 
followed Malanese people into the stadium today. I'm so excited. The whole community was out there. A lot of people here to support the Mustangs. That was a nice handoff between Hershberger and Jackson Freisner, who I think might be leading, but you can't really tell Generally because we got right. that stagger still. Lane five, Allen East. Ottoville is in seven. We'll see right here, and I think you're right, Jennifer. I think Allen East is going to get to the baton first, and they did. Allen East doing a great job. They're leading this race. Tyson Schaefer, the junior, is the third runner, and he's going to hand off to Trey Hensley. And as I mentioned before, you just watch Trey Hensley come yeah, through. Yeah, watch this. They are in great position here for Hensley to get the baton. Allen East looking to get to the state finals. 130.85 is the seed time they had coming into this race. Let's watch that handoff. Clean, smooth, and he is going. Here comes Hensley. Got a great handoff. And this is where we see Hensley really do his thing, right here on the straightaway. Yeah. He knows where he's going. He knows what he wants to do. He's cruising his way. Allen East is in the finals tomorrow in the four by two. That was impressive. Trey Hensley brings home an opportunity for the Mustangs to move on to a state championship. All right, fresh off the track, the gentleman from Anna. Gentlemen, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Chase Murray, and I'm grade 12. I'm Xavier McEldowney. I'm also grade 12. Uh, ben McDermott, I'm a senior as well. Justin Richards, and I'm also a senior. All right, guys, let's, let's talk about this uh, morning. You guys have been busy so far. Uh, how tough is it to, to stay fresh and get yourselves in good position? Um, it's difficult, especially in today's heat. It's pretty hot. Um, having no mile in between our events, it's hard to get a breath, stay cool. So we're trying our best. Earlier we were dumping water on our heads, trying to stay as cool as we could, stay as fresh as we can. So it's not cool. How important is it to catch your breath and really focus on your breath? Uh, actually, really important. After we run the 4x2, um, I end up doing a 5-second inhale and then a 5-second exhale um, and just keep repeating that. I find that it helps me uh, get back to like my baseline and be able to sprint for the next relay. That's probably good advice for everybody, isn't it? You know, focus on your breath and kind of relax. Here's a young man that looks like he's trying to relax a little bit too. Um, good morning so far. What's it going to take moving forward for you guys? Uh, a, lot, a lot of focus, a lot of focus. We got him in the 100 sitting at first, right? First place, so we all just try to stay fresh while he runs, and when he comes in, we get him going, we get our team going, and hopefully we just finish with the guys in first. Now, you guys look like you have a tremendous amount of chemistry with this group. Is that true? Oh, we for sure do. We've been doing this for three years, sadly, not four, because yeah. COVID, COVID took our freshman year away, but... Year after year practicing with each other, it really helps the chemistry and with handoffs and everything like that. Well, thanks for your time, fellas. All right, joining us now, the four horsemen of Allen East. Uh, gentlemen, introduce yourselves. Uh, Jacob Hershberger. Uh, Jackson Friesner. Eisen Schaefer. Trey Hensley. Uh, Let's we'll start with Jacob. Jacob, always fun to watch you start it off. I know you have that mentality that you're a leadoff anchor. What was your game plan today? Uh, get out fast and get the handoff off clean. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that is clean right there. All right. Still trying to catch your breath. It is a hot day out here. How, how tough is it dealing with the conditions here? Oh, it's rough. It's, it's hot and it's bad. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. He shakes his head. Yes, it is. Uh, what do you do to deal with this heat? Um, I uh, sit down, sit in the shade, just try and cool off as much as possible after each race. And yeah. Is it possible to drink too much water? Uh, yeah, if you drink too much water, then your stomach's going to hurt, and yeah. All right, let's move, let's move on to the, the closer here, Mr. Hensley. Always impressive anchor. Uh, you got to have that mindset where you just want to dominate. Is that true? Uh, I usually just try and get the race done faster so I can rest. That's about it. <laughs> hey, I love it, fellas. You guys got simple game plans. Well, congratulations today. Good performance so far, and good luck tomorrow. We're ready now for the girls' 4x100 meter relay here at the OHSAA Division Three State Track Day 1 prelims sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. 
ultimate outdoor, a division of Alt's seamless spouting. We just watched some blazing four by 200 meter relays. Now we got the four by one. Danny's one of his favorite races. <laughs> you talk about fast. You think the four by two is fast. Don't blink because this one's over in one lap. Heat one, we've got Fort Recovery in lane one, Norwayne in two, Tuscarawas Valley in three, Dalton in four, Minster in five, Margareta in six, Lehman Catholic seven, Carrie in eight, Lake Center Christian in nine. And this truly, Jennifer, is the event for handoffs just are an absolute must. You have to be crisp on your handoffs. You cannot afford a mistake at this level. Any, any time that you drop, it hurts you at this level. You get exposed. in lane one, lane five, and lane seven. Those are our local racers that we have running in this heat. Yeah, lane five, Minster got a really good start. Another really great handoff there. You watch that second place runner. She moves up the, up the ranks, and she's gonna take a position there. They're in the fourth position now. Right now, Minster is winning this race because of their handoffs. Absolutely fantastic job getting that hand back up high, slapping that baton into the hand. Just watch how crisp they are. Actually, I think that might be Dalton. Is it Dalton? Who we're My seeing goodness, here. you're right. Yeah, that's Dalton. Two orange uh, jerseys. Yeah, so, the orange and black, I get confused again. I think it's Dalton and Norwayne is who we saw. You talk about Minster, they were doing quite well. The runner on the back stretch looked like, I don't know, she may have had a, a, a leg problem or something. She yeah, didn't have the stride that I would have expected to see. I got so focused on Dalton in the blue or the, the orange jer jersey, and obviously I just say Minster. Fort Recovery is our top local finisher here they finished in fourth place remember the top two automatically go on and then the next five top times overall will make it to tomorrow heat two here's who we've got lane one worthington christian lane two montpelier lane three fort loramie lane four liberty center lane five dawson bryant lane six new middleton springfield lane seven colonel crawford lane eight trinity and lane nine columbus grove Obviously, we're watching Fort Loramie in three and four for Liberty Center. Fort Loramie with a nice time of 50.7. And then out there in nine, we've got Columbus Grove. Grove Bulldogs, a every year presence here in the state track and field meet. What a great program they have over at Columbus Grove. Nice time coming in at 50.8. Fastest time coming in is Liberty Center in four, but not by much. Dawson Bryant just .08 behind them in lane five. Grove did a nice job with their handoffs there. That's a tough lane to be in all the way out there on the outside. Can't really see anybody until you get to the curve. This one's pretty close. It's hard to call it right yeah, now. Yeah, it sure is. Everybody's jumbled up here. We get to the anchor runners. We'll see how this shakes out. And, oh, we got a drop oh. baton. A drop baton. That drop baton is giving Liberty Center the opportunity to blaze their way to a heat first place finish in the heat. So they are going to move straight on to tomorrow. Yeah, drop baton. That's rough. That's yeah. rough. That's difficult. You saw the look on the girl's face, and they are just in agony right now as they will not move on. Liberty Center finishes in that first place spot. They will move on. We're trying to figure out who the team was that dropped the baton. I think that actually may have been Dawson Bryant. I think you're right, yeah. They came in with that second fastest time, so uh, unfortunate for them. Liberty Center, though, and several others making their way to tomorrow.
Boys 4x100 meter relay. Heat one, as Danny just said before the broadcast, uh, before we game on, lots of local teams yeah. in this race. Yeah, this a lot is, of fast people. Yeah, this is a great event for our local area, and all the athletes come out for this one in 4x1. In lane one, it's Krista Ray. Lane two, St. Henry. Lane three, Macomb. Lane four, Youngstown Valley Christian. Lane five, Plymouth. Lane six, Anna, lane seven, Rock Hill, lane eight, Lowellville, and lane nine, Delphus Jefferson. Now, it wasn't long ago, we had the four by two, so uh, quite a few of these runners were in the, pre the just a few heats ago. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta remember that a lot of these kids are from smaller schools, Jennifer, and they're running a lot of events, multi-events, and they qualified in multi-events, so it, there's not very much time between these events. You gotta stay hydrated, you gotta stay cool, and we'll see, uh, you got Alan East in the next heat, they just ran and got the fastest time in the four by two. Let's see what they can do in the four by one. And you're gonna see them with a lot of the, in fact, it's the same relay, but Anna, who comes in with the second top time for the four by two, they had a few more, a little bit more depth. They don't have all the same runners in this yeah. race. Yeah, and that's a luxury to have. It's like it's like, it's like like a football team that can go guy, put guys on offense and defense and not have to run them both ways. It's a great luxury to have. And the other thing, too, is these are 17 and 8 year old kids. They just don't get tired. They don't get tired. <laughs> they just go. They don't get tired. Once again, we're watching lane two, St. Henry, lane three, Macomb, lane six, Anna, and lane nine, Delphus Jefferson. Look at Anna on the middle of that track. They got a great start and a really nice handoff. Oh yeah, that was a pretty handoff. And that second runner, according to our list here, it's Chase Murray taking advantage of that straightaway. Yeah, almost ran away from him there in the middle of the track on the Anna team, but still consistent right in the middle of this race. But take a look at lane Three. That's Valley Christian. Yeah, Valley Christian doing a great job. My goodness. McComb in three will get that second spot, the automatic uh, qualifying spot to move into tomorrow. Well, the last year's defending state champions, Youngstown Valley Christian, ran a 42-8-2. They did it today. Same school, 42-8. <laughs> right on par for another chance at a state championship. And McComb was second, and Anna came in third in that heat. Heat two in the prelims of the boys' 4 by 100 meter relay. In lane one, Ottoville. Lane two, Columbiana. Lane three, Seneca East. Lane four, Allen East. Lane five, Margareta. Lane six, Black River. Lane seven, Northwood. Lane eight, Marion Local <laughs> and Lane 9 Mooney. Sorry about that, folks. I was turning the page on my heat sheet and I couldn't see up in the corner. <laughs> a little bit of wind there blowing our heat sheets around. Marion Local back here where they belong in the state championships. Great athletes. You look at that. Tate Hess, a football star, basketball standout. Kyle Audi. Some familiar names we've watched a lot this year. Let's see what Alan East does, coming off that stellar 4x2 run. It's a lot of the same guys on that team, led by Jacob Hershberger and Trey Hensley. That, that should go. be a second to a second and a half. Oh, look at Hirschberger. Close on that uh, that handoff, but blazing fast. And Alan East already making a mark here at this prelim. They got a nice handoff there, a smooth handoff. Everything in transition. I think Margareta, though, got them just ahead. I think, I think you're right, five. yeah. All right, now Ice and Schaefer is about to hand off to Trey Hensley in four. Of course, we're also watching Ottaville in one and Marion Local in eight. 
Look at Marion Local. Tate Hess on the outside. Are you kidding me? Not kidding. Wow. What a run out there for Marion Local. Running in lane eight, I mean, wow. making their way to the automatic finals. That's unbelievable. What a great job by the Flyers. They shine in the big moments, and they really shine today. So first place in this heat for Marion Local. Automatic qualifier, Allen East is third. I would think they're going to make it in tomorrow. I, I believe they will, yeah. And that's it for the 4 by 100 meter relay. Hey, when we come back, it's going to be time for the girls' 400-meter dash. It's going to be our first chance to see defending state champion Sydney Sin from Wayne Trace. That's coming up next. You're watching State Track right here on WOSN. Moving now to event 13, and this is the girls' 400-meter dash. You are watching State Track Prelim, sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor a Division. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's Seamless Spouting. In Heat 1, Lane 1, Carly Bessiker of Covington. Lane 2, Ari Tompkins of Mogador. Lane 3, Kylie Montgomery of Dawson Bryan. Lane 4, the defending state champion, and she's from our area, Sydney Sin of Wayne Trace. Lane 5, Emma Richards of Fort Fry. 6, Olivia Hudson of Oberlin. 7, Hallie Haynes of Leesburg Fairfield. 8, Sophia Duorio of Mooney. And 9, Cameron Shook of Tiffin Calvert. One time around the track, they'll stay in their lanes the whole time. Sydney Sin's one of those athletes that people go to. Oh, we got a false start in the 400 meter dash. This is going to be interesting. So that second gun took off. False start here in 400. It looks like maybe lane five. Let's see. No. We'll see. The, the, the officials are getting together. I like the fact that the officials are getting together to clarify this. Sometimes uh, they're walking out. Uh. And that is. Lane five, that, that is, is Emma, Emma Richards oh, from of Fort, Fort Beverly Fry. Fort Fry. Oh, that's an awful feeling. We've been wanting a nice breeze here today, and now it's blowing all our stuff away. Mm -hmm. All right, starter is back going. We are now down to. Eight runners in this heat. Sydney Sen of Wayne Trace. She is committed to Michigan State University next year. State champion in this race last year, also part of the state champion 4x4 last year. Yeah, as I was saying before, she's one of those runners that people come out to watch. You know, you, you have your Sydney Sims and your Alexa Fortmans, mm. and last year your Brady Yanks, and just guys and girls that you want to see because they're so dominant at their sport and their event, and that's Sydney Sin here. And speaking of Alexa Fortman, Sydney Sin this year is going to attempt the double that Alexa yes, Fortman did yes. last year and is doing again this year. That 400-800 run where you only have about 15 minutes between those two races. Look at this girl make her way in to the straightaway. Yeah, this is dominance. The future Michigan State Spartan is showing us why she is definitely a D1 recruit. She makes it in, cruising in with around 56 seconds. Loved it. Would have loved to have seen Sydney Sin in the Big Ten running here for home meets, but she chose the Spartans. Good for her. She's going where she wants to go, and she was dominant in that race. 55-81. She is your top time, and she's moving straight to tomorrow. Heat two in the girls' 400-meter dash. In lane one, Emma Tyrell of Bucyrus. Two, Razia Rios of Woodmore. Lane three, Addison Swearingen. Fairlawn. Four, Maddie Merritt, Legacy Christian. Five, Maddie Lengacher of Smithville. Six, Olivia Saylor of Margareta. Seven, Cameo Cedarleaf of Minster. Eight, Jordan Rosales of Toledo Christian. And nine, Caitlin Bergman of Danbury. This is, I, I said this before, this and the 300-meter hurdles, I think, are the mm -hmm. toughest events in track and field. This is a brutal race, and it's a sprint. It is one lap around, and you really got to be conditioned at this race. Wow. 
Election Lane three, Fairlawn in three, Minster in seven. Of course, Minster already has that four by eight championship. Cameo Cedar Leaf, part of that group. So she can run the 800, she can run the 400. Yeah, she's <laughs> quite a, a she's conditioned athlete. She's also a athlete. swimmer as well. <laughs> and that's your wheelhouse, the <laughs> swimming events. It would be nice to be swim covered and swim today. So this race is looking a little different than Heat 1 did. Of course, Sydney Sin just took that last heat with no question. This one cause looks like it's going to come down to the straightaway. Yeah, we've got four girls right now competing in this one for a chance to move on and win this heat. And they're right there bunched up together. Fairlawn's Addison Swearingen is up there, was in the first spot. Will she hold on? She's looking at third right Looks now. Like Margareta, maybe? Legacy Christian and Smithville, I believe. Yeah, Smithville. Let's see if we can see the results here. Oh. oh my goodness. If you heard that in the crowd, uh, the high jumper was just going for, was that a was state, state meet, record. meet record of 510. Didn't get it so close. Here's your results here. Legacy Christian was your top time here in this heat, but Sydney Sin is your top time overall, and Fairlawn did get that third spot, so that wraps it up for the girls' 400 meter dash. Uh, joining us now, the sensational one, Sydney Sin, just coming off the track. A, a little bit of a tough run for you right there, laboring at the end. Walk us through that event. Yeah, so I knew I really wanted to go in there and try to run that 400 hard. Uh, just see kind of what I could do because I only have another 400 in the 4x4 today and then tomorrow I'll have the 4 and then the 800 plus the 4x4 so I really wanted to go out and run it hard today and ran it pretty well it's super hot kind of kind of made the race a little bit harder than I expected but it's not exactly what I was kind of hoping for but hey I'll take that. <laughs> well your plan worked you absolutely dominated the race uh, winning it easily we're trying to send a message for tomorrow to everybody else? Uh, not quite. Uh, not like that. I just wanted to kind of do it for me and just kind of see what I could do and see how I was feeling today. Yeah. The sparkles on the face. Turn the camera right there. The sparkles. Uh, she's a star on the track and off the track. Who did the sparkles for you? Oh, me. I'm I'm our team. I'm our team braider, our team glitterer. I, I, take, <laughs> I take care of all the girls. <laughs> well, Danny Holbrook upstairs wants to know if you can go do his hair right now, can you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Just come on down here and find me. <laughs> well, congratulations. You're absolutely dominant today. We'll see you tomorrow. Good luck. Boys 400 meter dash, heat one, lane one, Brady Fillmore of Rootstown, two, Peyton Bodner, Bodner of St. Peter's, three, Trevor Stearns of Parkway, four, Evan Hudson of Oberlin, five, Jacob Rombach of Calvert, six, Cooper Chimley of Shadyside, seven, Noah Esther Warren, JFK, eight, Garrett McKinnis of Oak Hill, and nine, Wesley Schoen, Marion Local. What I like about this heat, Jennifer, is you look at those times and everything is separated between 48 seconds and 52 seconds or the low 51s, and, and everything is really, really questionable as far as who's going to win this one. So this is going to be a great race. As Danny said, this is pretty much a sprint. It's a tough sprint. It's a really Making tough your way sprint. all the way around. Back stretch is your friend in this race. Uh, the final stretch is painful, so that back stretch is pretty much the well, best part of the race, in my opinion, from my experience. Yeah, you feel good on that back stretch, and you get to that last curve, and then your body starts saying, you shouldn't be doing this this fast this long. Trevor Stearns from Parkway in three, Wesley Schoen and Marion Local in nine. Those are the ones we're watching, and you might hear the crowd cheering because there's just been set a brand new high jump record, and that High jump girl is so excited. You just broke 510. <laughs> or just cleared 510. What a jump by that young lady. We got a great race here. We're going to go under 50 seconds in this race. Lanes four and lanes five are your top two finishers Evan Hudson of Oberlin and Jacob Rumbach of Calvert. Those are your automatic qualifiers moving you on to tomorrow of Heat One. Heat. Two, lane one, Carter Curtis of Harden Northern. 
Lane two, Trent Tiemann of Delphus Jefferson. Lane three, Maddox Trees of Wayne Trace. It's hard to say. Maddox Trees of Wayne, Wayne Trace. Trace. Trace Trace. Trace Trace. Lane four, Cody Hessler of North Adams. Five, Brandon Rogers of Cincinnati Christian. Six, Christian Davis of Brookfield. Seven, Andon Blankemeyer of Columbus Grove. Eight, Caden Wiseman of Williamsburg. And nine, Braden Bromagem of Ansonia. A lot of local flavor in this one, too, Jennifer Harden, Northern Delphi, Jefferson, Wayne Trace. And We've got Columbus, Grove. Columbus Grove out there. We've got them out there everywhere. Looks like she may be going for another <laughs> record out there at five, over 5'10", so good for her. Talking about the high jump girl there who who uh, has set the state record, which is incredible. And she is not done yet. And of course, our 400 is not done yet either as we are watching those heat two racers in the blocks just about ready to go. And for all you weather lovers out there, it's still hot here. You made it. You talked about it earlier, Jennifer. Carter Curtis from Hard Northern running in a long sleeve shirt, I, and I'm just kind of curious. I wonder why he's doing that, or if it's you know. That's I right. Guess, he's I guess still we'll in know. that yeah. long sleeve shirt again. Yeah. He's in one. Trent Tiemann from Delphus Jefferson in two. Maddox Trees from Wayne Trace in three, and Andrew Blankemeyer from Grove in seven. And maybe he's just comfortable in that, and that's perfectly normal. He's made it to the state meet, so he's doing something right. So, Time-wise, though, it doesn't appear to me that he's running his top right now, so we right. don't really know, because he came in here with a 51-24. Yeah. Um, certainly happy to see him here and hope that everything's going well for Carter Curtis. As far as the finals go, here is who we have and how they finish. North Adams Hessler is your winner in this particular heat. Looking to see if any of our local people are close enough to make it to tomorrow. Groves Blankemeyer did finish in fourth with the 50-74. We'll have to wait and see on that one. That's close. Join us now just off the track. And in uh, Blankenmeyer. And in um, just coming off the track, he ran a, a 50.7. you happy with that? Uh, I am. It's definitely PR because regional prelims, I ran a 50.8. I like to get the PR. I was hoping to run our school record, which is 40. 9.7, but I still PR'd, though. It's got to make you feel pretty good about that, getting that personal record. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, coming in fourth kind of puts you on the fringe. You're going to have to wait it out, see if you make it. If you do make it, what's it going to take tomorrow? It's going to take a lot. I'm glad that I made it, and I know that I, I'm almost guaranteed a spot on the podium. I just got to beat one guy, and I know I made it. As a senior, last go around with this, um, some of the emotions that you're feeling. Yeah, it's it's over a mixed bag. I'm real sad that this is my last year ever doing this. I really got to give it my all out here. A little part of me is kind of all right having it done because I've been doing this for a while now, and this heat kind of gets starts getting to you. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for your time. Welcome back to the OHSAA Division Three State Track and Field Prelim Day, sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X, Ultimate Outdoor Division of Alt Seamless Spouting. The girls 300 meter hurdles, Heat One, Lane One, Bryn Fortman of Columbus Grove, Two, Jessa, Ber Jessa Bergai of Ottoville, Three, Rylan Jones of Allen East, Four, Shelby Grover of Lucas, Five, Ava. Vecchione of New Middleton Springfield, six Brianna Montgomery of Gibsonburg, seven Corey Vermila of Lovenville, eight Macy Miller of Fairbanks, and nine Carly Busher of St. Henry. Some very familiar names in sports around Northwest Iowa with Bryn Fortman from Columbus Grove, the basketball standout. Also Ryland Jones from Allen East, a great basketball player there too. So 
a lot of these kids are dual sport athletes, and uh, this is the toughest race in track and field. I really believe that, and it's, especially days like today. It, it definitely is the grit that you need, especially at this point in the race. And Rylan Jones, a sophomore, got here as a freshman last year. What a great accomplishment. Finished 16th in the state, and she's running pretty well here. Yeah, she's doing a great job right now. She's in third place with a chance to move into the second position, and she's going to battle this other girl. Automatic qualifier gets in, and I'm not real sure she got the automatic, but uh, I bet you she'll be moving on. That was close. Your winner in this race was from Lucas Grover, from Lucas Shelby Fairbanks second, and Ryland Jones from Allen East finishing in third with a time of 46.42. Yeah, great job by Ryland Jones of uh, getting herself a chance to move on. St. Henry in four. We will have to see how the times shake out to see who gets in tomorrow. Heat two in the girls' 300-meter hurdles. In lane one, Sky Morris of Waynedale. Two, Kara Pipitone of Tusker Valley. Lane three, Sammy Rotuno of Mooney. Eight, Azura Travis Woodmore. Lane five, Liv Linderman, Delphus Jefferson. Six, Madison McDaniel, Dawson Bryant. Seven, Ariel Heitkamp, Fort Loramie. Eight, Kayla Eaton, Triad. And nine, Kendall Rawl of Riverdale. You look up there in lane five, Liv Linderman, who was absolutely dominant in the 100-meter hurdles as she moved on to the finals. She's got a great shot here to go in two events. Oh. oh, so they had them ready to go. No rattling. Is that what was happening? What'd you, were they moving, you think? Uh, sometimes the judges aren't in rhythm together. Uh, maybe somebody has a question about the star. There's just all kinds of things. I see them all huddled up together there. I don't think anybody did anything wrong. I just think they wanted to clarify something on the start or something with the judges. What do you think that can do for the runners well, when they have to restart yeah, that again? You, you saw it earlier today. You saw a young lady who falls started. And look, this is the pinnacle of track and field in the state of Ohio. It's the state champ. Nerves are unsettling. You're out there representing your school. There's 10,000, 15,000 people here. Here. It's really, really hard. The mental part of this game is, is, is overlooked a lot of times. You got to be on your game and you got to be mentally sharp. So as we're watching them still huddle together and discuss, just want to mention uh, Lib Lindemann. She finished 13th in this event last year, but it's really been evident that this track season, she came out, she's got some goals set, and we've seen it all season <laughs> yeah. with the way she's been racing. Yeah, she's a fantastic athlete. You watch her on the basketball floor, you watch her on the track, and, and she's a competitor, and that's the bottom line, is regardless of wins or losses, she keeps coming back, and she's a junior this year, and I, I think she's going to have bigger and better days ahead of her as a senior. You know, I, I I sometimes give out hair awards, and last year I got to do that <laughs> yeah. because the guys were having their big, uh, big, big yeah, hair. Right. I, I'm giving her a hair award because yeah. she usually has the pretty cool braids going on. And, and the shoe award, you gave out the shoe award today because <laughs> we had six guys in one race with the pink neon shoes. A lot of stop and starts today with the officials. We've seen them hold them in the blocks a little longer than usual. Okay, again, we are watching Liv Lindemann in five, Ariel Heitkamp in seven, who also qualified for state in the four by two and the hundred hurdles, and Kendall Rawl in nine. Lindemann is the first one over the hurdle. She's doing great right now, running a really good race. Watch the hurdles. Watch who goes over in first. Yeah, Lindemann continuing to keep in that top spot. Yeah, she's neck and neck. Now, this is the point where you really see the grit. Uh, they've got two more hurdles left to clear. Lindemann now moved into the second spot with Travis in the lead spot. And she went oh. just oh, whoa. And the leader went down and finished, I believe, fifth or sixth. Fifth or sixth on the last hurdle. We talk about it all the time. You've got to concentrate on every hurdle. 
45.94, top time for Lindemann. She automatically moves into tomorrow. Fort Laramie's high camp getting the second place spot with a 46.70. So top two in this heat from our local area. Unbelievable, Liv Lindemann. Joining us now down here, the super sophomore from Allen East, Rylan Jones. Rylan, happy with the effort? Yeah, I actually am a lot better than I finished last year, so I think that's good. I'm just hoping my time's good enough to qualify me for Saturday. A little bit nerve-wracking coming in third. You, you don't really have your destiny in your own hands. you got to kind of look and see if you're going to make it. Is it a little nerve-wracking? Yeah, definitely. I really won that second-place finish. I was pretty close, close. But hopefully my time's just good enough. Yeah, this Allen East group, you guys really know how to run. What's to say about the track tradition at Allen East? I mean, we're just great teammates to each other. We push each other all the time, and our coaches are a part of the reason we got here. They push us every day at practice, even, even if we don't want to do anything. So I say it's them too, I hope. Well, we're crossing our fingers for you, hoping that you get in. Thanks for your time, and congratulations on a good effort. Thank you. We'll send it back up to Jennifer and Danny upstairs. Uh, the winner of the girls' uh, 300 uh, hurdles, heat number two, joins us now, Liv Lindemann from uh, Delphus Jefferson. Liv, dominant performance, exactly what you wanted? Um, yeah, I'm not super happy with my time, but happy to be out there and pretty upset with that how that girl ended, but got to keep going and happy to be back tomorrow. Yeah, I saw you afterwards putting a little bit of ice on the lower back, fighting an issue there. Um, yeah, I had a little bit of an injury in the beginning of the week, but I've had the best like chiropractor and just parents who keep giving me that treatments and everything I need, so have to be able to compete the best I can. Absolute all-star on the track and an all-star with the hair today. Walk us through the decision to go with the hairstyle. So when district started, I have a friend at home and she does all my hair and I've kept it and it's had me good luck, so could not have it without here today. So If I do my hair like that, can I run fast too? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> really just... The dynamic of it just makes you go. I don't think that's going to work, but uh, congratulations on a great performance and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, let's head up to Jennifer and Danny upstairs. Moving to the boys 300 meter hurdles. We have a lot of local runners in this heat. Heat one, lane one, Jay Schroeder of New Knoxville. Two, Garrett Trentman of Ottoville. Three, Owen Reindler of Marion Local. Four, Kellen Schlagbaum, Ottoville. Five, Colton Reese for sales. Then in six is Michael Bellone of Louisville, seven Dylan Booth of Shadyside, eight Cameron Carruthers of Trinity, and nine Zach Reynolds of Columbus Grove. Yeah, six of the nine runners are from Northwest Ohio here. We could have had this one while I'm a senior. That's right. It made more people happy. But yeah, a lot of local flavor here. And look at these times, and they're all at the 42nd to 39 second mark. So this is going to be a really tight race. Kellen Schlagbaum comes in with a lot of history here, finished fifth in this event last year number one seat time in this race overall. Yeah, this is his race. He's been pointing for this one for all year. He's a 38-7 uh, seed time, so let's see how he does. He is in lane four. And let's see if he's the first one over the he hurdle. Is. And yeah. he is. Kellen Schlegbaum wasting no time to catch up on that stagger. Yeah, he attacks every hurdle. And it reminds me back in 2014, John Lynn, who set the state record, he ran with just, just really mad at the ground and just attacking those hurdles. As we are talking about Kellen, we also do not want to forget about it. He's stuttering a little bit Actually, before he goes. Wait a second. Owen, Owen Remler, also a Marion local. Oh, oh. So we got Marion local second, Ottoville first, and did well, that was Schlagbaum of Ottawa yeah, first. Did Trentman of Ottawa, did he stay in his lane? Trentman, well, he went down. We'll see where he ends up. So 39.05 is your top time, and that is Kellen Schlagbaum. Marion Local, Owen Rangler is second. Heat two in the boys' 300-meter hurdles. In lane one, Cohen Egan of Buckeye Trail. Lane two, Jacob Wakefield of WS Northwest, lane three, Braxton Barnett of Shenandoah, lane four, Jeremy Reber of Waynedale, five, Trevor Vogt of Colonel Crawford, six, Carter Herman of Edgerton, seven, Wyatt Lakes of Twin Valley, eight, Lucas McEwen of Lakota, and nine, Jace Hill of Ashland Crestview. No local runners in this race, but obviously some of them are going to make their way to tomorrow. Right, and as many local runners as in the first heat, we've got none in this heat, but we've got some great times. You look at at uh, Jeremy Reber from Waynedale at 39.4, which is a really good time, so we'll see him. And then uh, Carter Herman from Edgerton at 39.2.
Oh, we almost had a stumble there in, heat in lane two. Jacob Wakefield. And that's the second one he's really having trouble. Once you get your steps off, it's really tough to get back in it when you're trying to compete against really good runners. Two hurdles left to go. Current leader is right there in lane number five. Five and six, those are your top two. Trevor Vogt, Colonel Crawford, and Carter Herman from Edgerton. They will move on to tomorrow's final. And we're getting ready to move on as well. We're moving on to the 200-meter dash in just a moment. But first, we're going to go to break. We also want to remind you that you are watching this broadcast at no admission fee to you. But there is a fee for our station to broadcast it. Say thanks by giving a donation of any amount. Go to WTLW.com forward slash donate as your way of saying thank you to WSN for covering local high school sports. We'll be right back with more track right here on WOSN. We are back with more sprinting. You are watching the OHSAA State Track D3 prelims sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. In the 200 meter dash, in lane one, heat one, Madison McDaniel, Dawson Bryan. Lane two, Ellie Moeller of Liberty Center. Three, Angela Williams of South Central. Four, Izzy Zahn of Coldwater. Five, Kinley Green of Fairbanks. Six, Cece Worsh of Temple Christian. Seven, Anaya Charlton of Trinity. Eight, Aaliyah Hilliard of Montpelier. And nine, Allie Schindler of Ayersville. Nothing like the 200, Jennifer. We got a great vantage point. When you watch those kids come around that curve, the speed just resonates off the track, and it's just a great event to watch. There they go, Cece Worsham in six, again, showing the grit that she has coming off of a car accident that was not her fault. Just this past Sunday's left her with a black eye, swelling, uh, stuff in her hand. She is running well, but also running super well is Izzy Zahn of Coldwater. My goodness, Izzy Zahn looks amazing. She's gonna go under 25 in that race. She came in with a 24.72 seed time. This heat, 24.54. 24 wow. She's your heat winner, moving directly on to tomorrow. Third place is Moeller from Liberty Center, where she needs to time in to get in to make it to tomorrow. Top two automatically qualify, and the next five overall times will make it. Worsham with a fourth place finish, despite all that adversity. Look at that, a 25.58. That's a great time for her right now, considering what she's been through the last couple of days. Heat two in the girls' 200-meter dash. Lane one, Jessica Hansen, McDonald. Lane two, Nigel Robinson, Finneytown. Lane three, Ava Vicione, New Middleton, Springfield. Lane four, Brianna Shevney of Dalton. Lane five, Maddie Merritt, Legacy Christian. Six, Leah Smith of Calvert. Seven, Peyton Johnson, Peebles. Eight, Addison Swearingen of Fairlawn. And nine, Alex Kesson of Delphi St. John. So our eyes are on the outer lanes, eight and nine. Yeah, Alex Kesson qualified in the 100 and the long jump for the state meet. You look at Alex. Addison Swergen from Fairlawn, she is qualified for the 100, 200, 400, and 800. Out there in lane eight, nine is Alex Kesson. I think I said lane seven and eight, but eight and nine. I'm so used to eight lane tracks right, a lot right. of the times. But your leader right now, strong and running, is in lane four from Dalton. Very good run by that young lady from Dalton. She got up and out quick. Brianna Chinevi, just a strong run by her. We'll have to wait to see her time. 24-9, good run by that young lady. So Dalton and Finneytown get the automatic bids to tomorrow's final. They will be uh, shared with some pretty good runners from our area. Izzy Zahn of Coldwater. Uh, Moving fast in yeah, that first Izzy Zahn's got a great chance to win the state title tomorrow with that time. She looked really good in her run. Looked the best of the part of all the runners today. A winner of the 200. Uh, first seat, Izzy Zahn from Coldwater. Izzy, you have to feel good about that. I do. It was amazing. 
I just really went out there and pushed, told myself I could do it, and then PR'd. I think I'm ranked first right now, so that's good. Uh, PRing always a big deal, but especially here at the Jesse O, does it mean a little bit more? Yeah, it does, because it's like a huge stadium, and this was my goal is to get here in the 200, and I did, so really proud of myself. As a sophomore, are you kind of surprised that you're down here competing at this level? Yeah, I thought like mainly seniors go down here for like individual events, but I don't know. I worked this winter. I was with the indoor track club, so I think that really paid off. Well, you got one more day in front of you. You're going to be competing. You got a chance to win it all. What's it going to take? Everything I've got. I need to get sleep, eat healthy, and make sure I'm stretching and warming up properly. Well, we wish you nothing but luck from here. Congratulations on a great effort. We'll head up back upstairs. Boys 200 meter dash in lane one, Drew Modelski of Lowellville, two, Isaac Cox, Rock Hill, three, Ramonte Coleman, Northwood, full four, Cole Miller, Paint Valley, in lane five, Hayden Heidel, Lipsick, six, Aiden Jones, Brookfield, seven, Matt Wisniewski, Independence, <laughs> eight, Malcolm Blunt of Yellow Springs, and nine, Riley Ramey of Plymouth. Hayden Heigl, our area representative, he was the regional champion at Fostoria High School, so great chance for him to move on here in lane five. Hey, go in the middle of that uh, run there. Really strong runners right there next to him, both to his left and to his right. Your leaders right now, Cole Miller from Paint Valley and Aiden Jones from Brookfield. And it looks like they, yeah, that maybe, was. <laughs> I think they're going to be your, it was pretty close. Cole Miller was fantastic. It almost looked like he put it in cruise control the last 20 meters there and <laughs> just kind of coasted in. Heat two in the boys' 200-meter dash, and that will allow us to see Jacob Hirschberger back on the track again for the fourth time today. I think that kid is fantastic. Every time I get a chance to watch him run, I get excited. And as you said, this is his, he didn't run it last year, which is so amazing, and he's such a great athlete. Love watching that kid compete. I wonder if ONU is going to try to nab him for track. You know, <laughs> it's in the spring. Try to nab him for every it's sport. in the spring. He possibly could do it. Alex Howe is in lane one from Northwood. Hirschberger is in two from from Allen East, three, Braden Austin of Summit Country Day, four, Colton Bishop of Twin Valley, five, Evan Hudson, Oberlin, six, Gabe Opong, Tree of Life, seven, Gage Bodie of Margareta, eight, Addison Reamer, Ashlyn Crestview, and nine, Kaylin Butler of Mechanicsburg. I've had a chance several times to interview Jacob Hershberger on the gridiron, and he's a really humble kid, and he's just really good with the media, and, and, and every aspect of his life, in education and, and athletics, and look, he's a smart kid, he got into ONU, which is, you know, a high academic school, so good for him, and the uh, sky's the limit for that young man. But he's a... He's, he's an animal on the field. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, he is. He's a nice young man who knows Turns when to it get on. it exactly. done. Exactly. And he is out of the blocks pretty fast again. He knows he's probably got to move in this if he wants to move on because he's got quite the crew, or group of runners against him. But he's on the inside. And he's got a good vantage point here. Let's see what he can do. It's a straightaway. Lane six is your leader, Gage Opong of Tree of Life. Hershberger <laughs> with a good run. It's going to come down to time to see if he can get a fourth final spot. Yeah, that tomorrow. was a tough race. Got a great start, but really struggled around that curve. And then the, the uh, straightaway, we had some really strong runners. And you look at the body types of a lot of those kids, and they were tall and lean and really had big strides. 22 6 7 is the time for Hershberger. He finishes sixth place in this heat. Have to check on to the mile split. You can in, yeah. see if he's made it into tomorrow. Well, we're going to take a quick break when we come back. It's time for the 4x400 four meter relay. Two heats of each, and we'll be done with this prelim day. You're watching a great day of blazing hot track right here at the Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. You're watching it on WOSN.
Okay, Welcome back you. to the date state track D3 prelims, and it's time now for the second to last race in the day. The girls 4 by 400 meter relay will have two heats, just like we have in all of our other prelims today. And in lane one, Tuscarawas Valley, lane two, Woodmore, lane three, Columbus School for Girls, four, Tiffin Calvert, five is Minster, that 4 by 8 champion team. Several of those runners are back here in this 4 by 4 6, Mogador. 7, New Knoxville. 8, Mooney. 9, Patrick Henry. Minster placed fourth in this event last year. All four of the runners are back. Defending champion Wayne Trace went at 355.95. Coldwater finished second, and Minster finished fourth. Wayne Trace will see them in the next heat. And of course, they're going to have that super fast Sydney Sin as their anchor that we expect. <laughs> Love watching her run. But what we're watching right now here is in lane five, Minster, seven, New Knoxville, and nine, Patrick Henry. And you just got to wonder with, with, with a squad like Minster, they, they've seen their teammates with great success today. And it carries over amongst your teammates. And these girls are fired up to continue that trend in the four by four. You're right. You know, sometimes just the energy that oh, comes with things like this can produce amazing results in these runners. Well, you need a lot of energy today with the, with the temperatures as high as they are and kind of, everybody's kind of sluggish. You need that energy. Get up there, finish! Still in the finish. stagger here. Got to watch and see who hands off first to and give a good idea. Got to be Minster. Looks like Minster. Minster in five and New Knoxville in seven. Both of those had pretty close handoffs, but Minster appearing to be in the lead as they make their way around that first yeah, turn. I see New Knoxville, a real small school, doing a great job of getting down here to Columbus, and kudos to them for their hard work this year, but Minster out in front of this one. New Knoxville's incredible. You know, I think every single go, high schooler is in every sport. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and they do amazingly well at what they do. <laughs> They don't graduate many kids, but everybody competes, right? <laughs> well, we and we want to see graduate all the kids. Yeah, well, they graduate all the kids. They just don't have a lot of yeah. kids in their graduating <laughs> class. <laughs> yes, thanks for big clarifying that. <laughs> well, that orange is what we see in the lead right now. Is that Calvert behind the Minster in this race? And I wouldn't be surprised if it is Calvert. That's a name we say over and over again. But New Knoxville close behind too. You know, a lot can happen in a four by four sure, with absolutely. every single leg. But Minster, they're making a lot happen right now. They are. Just a great school as far as distance. And uh, they, they produce great distance athletes every year. And look, it's it's a one lap around, but it's a distance event here. Four runners, one lap apiece. So it's, it's a tough race, but Minster, they just own this race and they do a great job of it. And it is just one lap around, but they're gonna be anchored by Taylor Roth, who <laughs> went two good. laps around <laughs> earlier today. Very impressive. Defending champion in the 800, and she's going to be the anchor today. Um, you're going to see her put some speed well, on that we know she's got. Yeah, if you told me to pick a girl, any girl in this state meet to finish out my 4x4, four four, I'm picking Taylor Roth all day and every day. Now, as we watch what's happening here, some sprinting happening, taking on as we get ready to pass these off. And we might have a lead change, yeah. too close to change our leaders in the line, but it is close. On, Calvert, Felicia. Minster. New Knoxville. This is going to be really interesting to watch what Taylor Roth does. She's sitting in that second position. Let's see when she decides to make her move. That pressure on the outside, that girl in front feels Taylor Roth on her side. Well, she's a smart runner because yeah, she, she knows you don't want to run on the curve. It's too much energy. Even if you don't think it's a lot of energy, here's where you want to and make that move. here goes Roth. And we're watching uh, the aeronautical. Well, she's going to the... With that, <laughs> An aeronautical college, that's, that's right. just call it that. She's going for Homeland Security. Yeah, that's Daytona what her Beach, major Florida. is going to be. But yeah, it's, she's going to run track and cross country for them. <laughs> she's doing a great job here. She knows she's in a really good position right now with the lead late in this race. I really love her stride. I love her strength. And I love the way she's even moving her arms with power. She just looks very smooth. Yeah, she looks comfortable, doesn't she? Top two, making it directly to tomorrow. The third one right behind there is going to hopefully time in. We would think that might happen. And there you go, Minster, 4.01. That's a nice time moving yeah, in tomorrow. Just under the uh, four-minute mark, just up at the four-minute mark. So four-minute point seven zero is the time that we see there on the board. Calvert finishing in second. Oh, and that was Woodmore in third place. Uh, I misread the jersey. <laughs> well, I've done it all day. 
It is tough to see a lot of times. Patrick Henry coming in fifth place there with a 408. Top two making it on to tomorrow. And uh, the next five overall will also make it. Heat two of two in the four by four. In lane one, New Bremen, two McDonald, three Fort Loramie, four Norway, five Colonel Crawford, six Wayne Trace, seven Mechanicsburg, eight Margareta, and nine Toledo Christian. I just want to clarify, I had a few missed calls in that previous heat. Sometimes it can be difficult to differentiate between it these is. these uh, jerseys that look really similar to what we've been calling all throughout well, the year. We're, we're at a high point, too. We're way up in the crowd here. And, some, and I didn't bring binoculars. I had them, but I forgot them. <laughs> but uh, you're right. Sometimes it gets confusing with all the different schools. Right now, though, we certainly know where they are since they're still in their lanes. And New Bremen is in one. Fort Loramie is in three. Wayne Trace is in six with a 357-27 seed time. They were your state champions last year. They're going to be anchored by Sydney Sin. And let's remember, Minster just ran a four-minute flat. Yeah, you're going to see a great run with Sydney Sin. And I hope that she gets an opportunity to go under four minutes. I think mean, it's so cool on a four-by-four team. Had a chance to do a lot of a a couple weeks ago. They went 359 in the WBL meet. So a lot of great runners. Remember, our runners are still in their stagger. You gotta keep that in mind as you're ready to watch the handoff to figure out who is in what lane. But six is your top seed time, and that is Wayne Trace in lane six. Wayne Trace gets the baton first, so great job by them. I'm also appreciative of Wayne Trace's uniforms because yeah, they're very noticeable and I'm not going to mistake those. And there's a great comfort in knowing when you have an elite athlete like Sydney Sin mm -hmm. running that fourth position, there is a great comfort in the rest of your team knowing, look, I, I'm going to do the best I can, but I know she can make up. Now, obviously, if you fall or drop the baton or something, but if you're just not having that kind of day, Sydney Sin is the type of athlete can pick you up and carry you to a victory. Absolutely. Well, right now, Wayne Trace sitting in second right there on the curb. I almost think that she wants to wants to pass her. Oh, she's going to do it. Maybe? <laughs> Close? Uh, she's going to wait to a curve. We're waiting until we get off the curve. Good Brennan, choice. Just Good choice. a few extra steps yeah. there on that outside. But yes, Wayne Trace currently in that second spot, getting ready to hand off to the third runner. And Colonel Crawford, the team that they're competing with right now, look, they take a back season, nobody in high school track and field. Colonel Absolutely, Crawford right. has a fantastic tradition. We haven't talked about them a lot, but listen, they are competitors at Colonel Crawford. It's Riley Ritz help who is running, according to our sheet here. We'll be passing off to Gabby Rawston. Caroline Winans, one of the two Winans on this team, running for Wayne Trace right now, and we'll be passing off to Sydney Sin. Don't forget, we've also got New Bremen running and Fort Loramie to round out our local runners. Yeah, right now it's a two-team race, and watch Wayne Trace takes the lead before the curve, put a little pressure on Colonel Crawford going around that curve. Wayne Trace running with two freshmen, both Winans. I'm going to make a guess that they're twins, Kareen and Caroline. And then two seniors, and I tell you what, according to my schedule, this is one of the freshmen, and she's doing a fine job for being like a ninth freshman. grader. Doesn't look like a freshman. She has no fear there. All right, Colonel Crawford's putting it on here, wanting to get that time, knows what they need to get. They know who they are up against. Got to get that to that anchor because here goes Sydney Sen, your defending state champion in the 400, the runner-up in the... 800, 800 indoor. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sydney Sin's sitting back right now. She's in second place. She knows that if she stays in second place, they're still qualifying, but she's a competitor. Let's see what she does. It's true. She could be thinking about tomorrow, could be analyzing uh, the she, heat and she's everything today, that's yeah. been going on. Uh, here she goes, though. This. Yeah, I'm just going to okay, win this the whole is thing. one of my favorite parts yeah. of the way some people run this race. They they do a backward split. Of course, we've seen Sydney uh, sprint the whole thing, but she just did that. She just cruised in the first 200, pick, got to that 200 mark, and here she goes, turning it on. Jennifer, that is elite right there. That is absolutely elite. When you see athletes run away from other athletes and there's nothing they can do, that's special right there. Wayne Trace. They will get under the four-minute mark, so they're going to move in tomorrow as the top-seeded uh, team. Minster going to be right behind them. What a great race <laughs> with the girls. Fantastic race. Boys will be coming up right next. 
Uh, heat two winners of the 4x4 to ladies from uh, Wayne Trace. Tell us who you are. Um, I'm Caroline, I'm a freshman. I'm Kiara Bahina, I'm a senior. I'm Kareen Winans, and I'm a freshman. And Sydney Sin, and I'm a senior. Fantastic. Uh, Wayne Trace, no, no uh, secret that you guys lo love to run fast. How important was it for you guys to win this heat? Um, it was pretty important because um, we wanted to get a good lane for tomorrow so that we'll run pretty good tomorrow, I don't know. <laughs> uh, not having a good lane, really tough, isn't it? It is, especially going out and trying to judge yourself because it's, it helps having someone to pull you along. So getting, I think, probably lane four or five tomorrow, that, that should set us up good. A lot of people undervalue the, the third leg of a relay. Uh, not with you, though. It's important that you stay close because you, you got a good closer next to you, don't, don't you? Yeah, I just make sure I get good position for her, and then I make sure she gets us finished, finishes it off, yep, basically. Is there any amount of makeup that you feel as if you cannot catch someone? Um, yeah. <laughs> we kind of saw that at, at regionals. We had a really tough race. Uh, we, like, first through third all finished within, like, three-tenths of a second from each other. I ended up getting out kicked, and we got second at regionals. So there's definitely, definitely a limit. <laughs> well, congratulations on a good performance here today, ladies, and good luck tomorrow. We have made it to the final event of this day for the D3 prelims, boys 4x400 meter relay. In heat one, lane one, Versailles. In lane two, Bluffton. Lane three, Lowellville. Lane four, Ashland Crestview. Five, Hardin Northern. Six, Tenora. Seven, Cedarville. Eight, Wellington. And nine, Wayne Trace. You look at uh, some of the teams in this, Bluffton, the state runner-up in this event last year. Three of the four returners coming back, you know they'll be fired up. They've already got a state title under their belt today. Go for another one. Harden Northern, we've already talked about them this year. Wayne Trace, Tenora, a lot of local flavor. Wayne Trace, Van Buren's, uh, lots of local teams. Oh, oh man. false start. An entire team will be disqualified. Oh, no, and it looks like Bluffton has thrown the thrown the I think oh. that was Bluffton. He knew it when he did it. Yeah. He uh, he knew it when he did it. That is tough. Tough, tough. These guys worked hard this year for this and that is tough. You feel for that young man. You just feel for that young man. Yeah, he didn't even wait for the officials to come over and uh, say anything. He knew it. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a second. What'd they do? What has happened? Oh, they got a second chance or something. He is back on. I, I, so I'm curious about that since we did see a DQ before in the 400 where the girl did not get a second chance. Right. And, you know, we got Miles Holiday down in the infield. It'd be interesting if Miles could find out for us what that was all about. That's huge ramifications for the rest of the field. All right, so that's been an emotional start right away to this 4x4. Four four. Yeah, I see the athletic director for Bluffton is down there talking to one of the officials, so maybe he's explaining it to him. That is, that's that's great for Bluffton. They were the state runners up last year. They really have their eyes on possibly winning this entire meet. They are about, they've got a lot of great distance runners, and this would be a big part of, of their plans. Absolutely. Well, interesting to find out what happened. We'll effort ourselves to find out. So that has stalled us just a tad bit as we wait to get things going. We will let you know about a few other uh, people who have qualified for tomorrow in the boys four by two. Let me look at my notes here. Boys four by two, Allen East, Anna and St. Henry. In the girls four by two, Liberty Center, Coldwater and Minster, all of them will be uh, running in the finals tomorrow. We're still waiting here. We had we had the 
False start call. Yeah, well, yeah, disruption in the start, and uh, they put Bluffton back on the track. We thought they were disqualified. Alex Hanna, the athletic director, is down there talking to an official. They told Bluffton to go back on the track, and they are back in this race. saw Bluffton just hold on there at that time. Did not yeah. move fast. Still don't really know what took place. All of our contestants are still running and we're watching for sales in one, Bluffton in two, Harden Northern in five, Tenora in six, and Wayne Trace in nine. A lot of local teams in this race. So let's see. See, a lot of times when you have an event like that, that'll really shake you up. Let's see how Bluffton reacts to that. See if they can overcome a little bit of adversity here. According to what we have written down here, Landon Armstrong is supposed to be our leadoff for Bluffton. I know they did do some change up in, in the four by eight. Change up in the order, I should say. Not so much the runners, but sure. in the order. Let's see who gets to the baton first. Looks like that was four. Oh, oh, that but jump, jumped out of the lane. Yes, was he over did. there in nine, and I see an arm up. That would be uh, Wayne Trace. Let's see what the officials rule on that. They don't see. The lane four, Ashton Crestview. They had the first handoff, and they are in the lead. Ashley. Interesting running uh, style right there for your leader. His head's up. Yeah. <laughs> um, he that's, looks, that's different than what I see a lot of times in runners. Yeah, he looks real stiff right now, but he's got the lead, and, and, and that works for him. Hey, it's working. Uh, yeah, I've, it's I've seen working. a lot of different styles down here, and if it works for him, that young man has got a clear lead out there in front. Second place is what the question is. And, and look at Bluffton. Here comes Bluffton. They are now making that move that they, uh, that they have probably planned to do. Bluffton hands off in second place, even though they were closer to fourth in the lineup, and moves into that second place spot here as that third runner is now running. Going to have to run, though, to hold on. Third, fourth place, just right there on their heels. Yeah, because it's a clear leader right in the front now. Bluffton's in second place, but the battle for right now is second, third, and fourth. And the lead is changing, but it could change again. Everything can change so much with your anchor leg. Running a nice pace, just at 222 right now. And Bluffton moving back into the lead, but not for long. This is going to come down to the anchor for that second spot for that automatic qualifying spot. Eden Antrim, a little bit boxed in. He is boxed in. He's in there. Bluffton's in the fourth position right now. May have to to to. Um, he is doing that. He's going to have to pass on the curve. There's just not a lot of time left here, and these racers are fast. Yeah, he looks real strong right now as he comes in on the second position, and that's exactly where Bluffton wants to be right now. I, I, look, I know you want to win prelims, but if you can get that second position, because you're not, unless you have an incredible finish here, you're going to finish second or, or back behind. So let's see what Bluffton does here. Wow, that's a big stride coming from the Bluffton runner right yeah. now. He is kicking it in, chasing down the leader. Like you said, he's going to have to kick it in because that fight for second place right now, that is going to be close. Look at that finish. What a great run. Bluffton goes to the third position, and we'll have to find out who the second place runner. Was that Curtis from Harden Northern? Uh, he had so, the, yeah. It was Harden it was Northern. Harden Northern to come in. What is the, you know what, I need to know the secret of the long sleeve exactly. shirt. Exactly. What a great run for the Harden Northern Polar Bears. Pete Bruno's got those guys running great today. They come in second in the prelims, automatically onto the finals. All right, so they move on tomorrow to the finals. Bluffton's on that bubble with a 327-35. Remember the top five teams. Beyond those uh, top two winners, they automatically will move on to the final as well. And now for the final heat in day one of this awesome meet. Heat two, lane one, Shady Side. 
Lane two, St. Paul. Lane three, Twin Valley South. Lane four, Marion Local coming in with the top seat time of this heat. Lane five, United. Lane six, Northmore. Lane seven, New Middleton Springfield. Lane eight, Van Buren. Haven't talked about them too much this morning. The Black Knights, you're Came right, we have them. not. And lane nine, Fort Loramie. Yeah, look at Marion Local with the Tate Hess, the quarterback on that team. He's in the number one position. We'll see if... Uh, and he's moving, it yeah. looks like, in the number one position for his team, too. He's already made up one stagger, about to make up a second stagger. And proudly wearing the gold and blue. It's probably that's probably not the correct terms. It's no, probably it's official, <laughs> yeah. like maze or, or something something that sounds cool. You know what? They just win no matter what they Here wear. There we go. <laughs> they are just, uh, yeah, that's true. Fort Loramie's in nine out there in nine. Van Buren eight. They are running well. They are Their running local well. local is in four. I think Marion Local got the baton first on that exchange. Pretty close between, was that four and five or four and six? Yeah, Local's got a nice lead there coming around the curve. Andrew on Pullman, who we have listed as our second runner here for Marion Local. And I don't believe that first runner was Tate Hess. I believe that was somebody else. Not uncommon to You're see right, right. coaches move things around, especially on prelim day. Sure. Depends I got an idea what they got to do to get into finals, get ready for tomorrow. Sometimes save some of your runners or move them around, of course, to the end. They are jumbled up at the second, third, and fourth position. So this is anybody's race right now. You really got to watch the handoffs when it's jumbled like that because yeah. that can get really congested. Marion Local still in the lead. That third runner. Doing a great job Dearly. of holding off the competition. That's really right. fantastic job knowing what they have to do. And there's a real luxury to getting a lead in this because if you give up that lead and, and there's not a lot of uh, press from the third, fourth, and fifth runner, you still got plenty of time. You know, it's very common to stride out on the back stretch of the 400, but this, they got to be careful here. Hopefully, Marion Local is planning to kick things up if they want to keep that lead. Because sure. as you can see, they're now getting challenged by that second place. Crowd showing their approval for all these runners. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh is really coming on hard. This, what's makes, this is what makes the 4x4 four four so much fun, handing it off to the anchor, and then we get to see what might happen at sure. this point. Yeah. <laughs> Marion Local with a commanding lead here. You look on the outside, and there is and I'm not real sure what team it is, coming on the outside in the third position, looking really strong, taking over the second position on the curve. And that runner looks really strong, and he's coming up against the Marion Local Flyers. Well, and all he has to do is stay in that second right, position right. and move into tomorrow. Doesn't even really have to overtake that first position, though I think he oh, kind of wants might. to. Unbelievable effort. So Marion Local will finish in second place with the automatic move to tomorrow. Just outdone quite at the end in about the last 25. Yeah, United. United wins that race, it says on the board. 327.46, a 327.69 for second place for Marion Local. Fort Lormy coming in with a third place, so they're going to hope to time in for tomorrow's finals. And speaking of that, we will be back for the finals. Danny won't be here, unfortunately, but I'll have Miles Holiday with me and We'll have Jack McGuire on the ground for do some interviews. We're going to bring you all the finals, all the great, exciting things. But for today's event, for Danny Holbrook, Abby Beck, Miles Holliday, Jake Bonillo, Cassidy, Megan, Grace, Nick, and myself, Jennifer Beck, we're so thankful that you joined us for Division Three State Track Day One here at Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. Stay tuned. We got lots more track coming up right here on this station. One of the best races of the day. The heat of the 4x4, four four, the guys from Hard Northern crept up and got second place. Introduce yourselves, guys. Uh, Wesley Newton, I'm a senior. Uh, Riley Newton, I'm a freshman. I'm Zeb Wilson, I'm a senior. Carter Curtis, and I'm a junior. A lot of experience on this 4x4 four four team. How important was it to reach into that bag of experience to get the uh, second place finish today? 
Uh, it was pretty important. We, uh, my younger brother, uh, we really put a lot on him as the only freshman on the team to be able to run second and be able to pass people coming off that first leg. So, I saw that eye roll. They give you a lot of grief as the freshman. Yeah, I gotta pick up a lot of stuff, carry the tent sometimes, but we have a lot of fun. All worth it on days like this, isn't it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, third leg of the relay. Had to keep it within shouting distance of getting you an automatic qualifier at two. Now, what was going through your mind when you were kind of digging on that last 100 meters? Uh, I was just thinking about, you know, uh, our, our guy Carter here. He's, his hip's been feeling pretty pretty not great um, recently. And so we had all told him that we were going to run our best and put him in a position where he could do well and, and get us to Saturday. So I was coming around the curve and just kind of was thinking about how I needed to get it in a position where if something were to happen and his hip wasn't feeling great, that he would still be able to get the job done. And it worked pretty well. So, yeah. Carter, grueling last part of the race. Where did you find the extra energy to get it done? You know, I was just really looking forward to tomorrow and knowing the fact that we'll be standing on that podium here soon and just pushed me through. Did it for the seniors. Congratulations, guys. Great run. We'll see you out here tomorrow. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman from uh, Marion Local joining us right off the 4x4. Gentlemen, introduce yourselves, please. Uh, Victor Horsher. Andrew Pullman. Johnson, Tate Huss. Owen Rindler. All right, get in the second place. Move on till tomorrow. How important was it to get that second spot? Just to qualify and keep staying on. It's kind of like just qualify keep staying on stay. You guys are working hard. The weather today not helping you out, but does it at least help you stay loose? Yeah, it definitely doesn't make your men's, uh, muscles that's tense. It keeps you nice and loose, ready to run. Walk me through your, your program from here. What are you going to do the rest of the day to get yourselves ready for tomorrow? I'm gonna go, we're going to go back to the hotel, probably get some ice baths, get off our feet, let's get fresh for tomorrow. All right, great run by you guys, able to get that automatic qualifier. One more in front of you. What's it going to take tomorrow? Uh, obviously a lot of effort, but... We just got to go back to the hotel tonight, loosen up, stay stay cold, and come back here and run our hardest tomorrow. Yeah, so. All right, congratulations, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day here at the Jesse O, and we'll see you out here tomorrow.